Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to make chile colorado flour tortillas. Friends, this is a recipe you don't want to miss and it's a lot easier than the salsa verde flour tortillas. So if you've made any of our recipes before, this is one that you're going to be able to perfect. For this recipe, you'll need two and a half cups of all-purpose flour, three tablespoons of lard or you can use vegetable shortening, one cup of warm water, nine guajillo chilies, make sure to remove the stems and the seeds. And to season our tortillas, we're gonna be using one and a half teaspoons of salt, one teaspoon of ground cumin, and half a tablespoon of Mexican oregano. I'm gonna start off by removing the stems and the seeds and placing our chiles into the blender. Add your salt, ground cumin, and for those of you that don't like uh, ground cumin, you can skip it, but for those of you that love it, you're gonna absolutely love it in here your Mexican oregano. And now we're gonna blend until smooth. My Vitamix seems to be out of commission, friends, so she's gonna go on vacation while she gets repaired. <laughs> so we're gonna use our Foodie Ninja Blender uh, to blend our chiles, which is perfect, because a lot of you have these and they're just so much easier to use. And boom, done. Place your burner on a medium heat and add your blended ingredients. Once you can smell that your chili is roasting, go ahead and turn it off. You do not want to burn this part. After about 25 to 30 seconds, you're going to remove your pan from the heat and we're going to get started on making our tortillas. Add your two and a half cups of all-purpose flour to your bowl and then you're going to add your chili blend. Oh, it smells delightful in here. Absolutely amazing. Once you heat up this pan, you're heating up the oils from your spices and your chile, and it's absolutely aromatic heaven. Oh, it really is. What a difference from when you boil the chile. A huge difference. Would I be able to add my boiled chilies in here instead of doing the, the dry method that you did? Of course you can, Cloud, but guess what? It's gonna get really sticky and gross. Oh, man. <laughs> so if you guys wanna work that masa, go ahead. But when you're working with all dry ingredients, it just makes this process a whole lot easier and it's absolutely beautiful. This is one of the most gorgeous masas that I've ever worked with. It looks beautiful. And you know how much I love the masa for the tamales. We know how much you love red chili. <laughs> Got excited just by hearing you say that. <laughs> Add your three tablespoons of lard. And now we're gonna break up the lard and combine it into our dry ingredients. For the splash. You're welcome. I knew you were gonna love that. <laughs> as soon as the blend hits any kind of oil, it, you're gonna start seeing that color come through. Oh, yeah. It's absolutely uh, beautiful. I was just thinking, how lucky are the kids where their mothers greet them with fresh uh, made tortillas? Yes, precious babies. They deserve it. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, they deserve it. Uh, when I made these last time, the babies, because I wake up early, mm -hmm. the babies woke up and it's a, and they said, what's in the oven? It smells so good. And I'm like, oh, that's just my masa. You know how I turned the light on in the oven? They thought that I was baking something and they got hungry. They're like, it smells like chorizo. They're so sweet. <laughs> so they woke up hungry that day. So once you've combined your lard into your uh, dry ingredients, you're going to make a little well and start by adding three fourths of a cup of water. Depending on your climate, you might need a little bit more, a little bit less, but you can gauge it that way. I don't know if I said it, but the water that I did pour in here is warm. Okay, I'm just about done combining our ingredients and you're gonna notice a lot of you're gonna be like oh Steph it's not sticking to my hand this dough is absolutely amazing if you want this to be your starter tortilla recipe I definitely guarantee it a lot of you have a difficult time and don't know when you need to add a little bit more water right now would be the time to add a little bit more water Just and this because you have all that flour down there I know that if that flour down there needs to be hydrated I still need to hydrate a lot of this masa Hydration is key to keep nice, soft tortillas so that they don't dry out, along with the cooking process like I mentioned in our last tortilla recipe. And you're gonna continue kneading your dough until it's not sticky. If after four minutes you're kneading it's still sticky, you can sprinkle a little bit of flour, and by a little bit I mean about half a tablespoon, and start slowly, okay? And don't be scared of your masa, get in here. Knead it. 
Put You're your an industrial machine. Woo! Put your put your knuckles into it, okay? Okay, it's got this. Yep, you got this. The smell alone will motivate you to keep needing. <laughs> yeah. I'm already thinking of cheddar with this tortilla mm, for some reason. Yes. You know the orange and the red I'm contrast. Carne asada. Carne asada. Ay, qué rico. Qué rico. And after about six to eight minutes with this dough, you're gonna get the consistency that you need. It's not too tacky. You see that? Mm -hmm. Just perfect. So go ahead and make it into a ball like this. And if you're not huffing and puffing, then you didn't you didn't get in here. <laughs> you have to be huffing and puffing. And don't worry about the stains in your hands. It's no different than Cheeto stains on your fingers. It's just, they yeah. go away. It goes away. Warm up a little bit of lard in your hand and cover your masa with it. You can put a plastic wrap, a, a kitchen cloth, or you can put a plate. And you're gonna allow your dough to rest for a minimum of 45 minutes in a warm place. I like to place it in the oven with the light on. And the longer you let your dough rest, the better. So if you start this in the morning and then you don't get started on your tortillas till later, even four or five, six hours later, perfect. I've had this dough resting for five hours. Look at how soft that is. It's beautiful. And now we're gonna start making our tortilla balls. Is that burrito size? These are a uh, house burrito size. Don't okay. be thinking it's your taco <laughs> shop, okay? Don't play. You said calm Don't down. Don't get too excited talking about burritos because we get ourselves in trouble with that. Oh, uh, yeah. I got we sent don't... to HR because of a burrito. Yep, Cloud got <laughs> sent to HR for burritos. In my personal life, you guys. It was innocent, but it somebody so took innocent. it too far. You know who you are. Yep. We still pray for you. Don't worry. I actually do. <laughs> I actually do. You can't help who you love, you know? Like, you just... If you love somebody, let them do their thing yep. and just pray for them. As they say, if you love someone, let them go. You're all free to go whenever you want. I, I still love you. In, I just believe in surrender, not necessarily letting anyone go because they're not like cattle, you know what I mean? It's like it's an expression cloud. Oh, I meant literally. <laughs> like. You're like, no te rias de mi. Who me? Yeah, no, yeah. I laugh at myself. That's how you get through. It's maybe it's a cultural thing. Yep, it is for us. Pretty exact. You're gonna get a dozen of tortillas, okay? <laughs> a little bit more lard. Warm it up in your hands. Put it over your tortillas. That way they don't dry out. For this batch, I did use a plastic wrap, so I'm just gonna use the same one and place it over my tortilla balls and we're gonna get started on stretching our tortillas. Grab one of your masa balls. To some all-purpose flour, you wanna dip your masa ball just like this. And I like to press the edges. The longer you allow your dough to rest, the smoother it's gonna go for you, okay? I don't know, I've been doing that recently and I love it. And start rolling your tortilla. Do your stretch like a big huarache. That's about how big your tortilla is gonna be, okay? So once you do that, go ahead and flip it over. These tortillas are so soft while you're rolling them that it almost feels like a juicy, tender steak. Ooh. <laughs> kind of like our birria verde, you guys. <laughs> In the oven, that tender. You are gonna have to dust your rolling pin a few times while rolling your tortillas, and that's okay. If you see any of the flour, it'll be fine. That's why sometimes with this recipe, you have to hydrate it properly or else when you're doing this part, that's the part that'll end up drying your tortillas too. I hope this uh, small recipe of tortillas is inspiring you to get in that kitchen. Start building memories with the kids. Saturday mornings, get your coffee and start with the masa, even if they're not helping. They're gonna remember you for making tortillas on Saturdays. 
And when they miss you, they'll be making tortillas on Saturdays. <laughs> and they eventually come around. They do, they do. I mean, who doesn't love tortillas? And boom, we're ready to go. So good. <laughs> Cloud got the first taste test today. Mm -hmm. You are going to notice that with this flour, the dough is so soft that you do get more of the curvy. And you can taste the red chili in here and you the can. spices. So mm -hmm. good. Y'all did yourself. Also, when you're roasting your chili, you can get more of the natural oils to come out from your, um, from your chili. And that's why your blend for your lard has to be exact for this recipe. Gracias, Doña. Ready? Ready. I love seeing the way the color changes. It just goes from a regular orangey red to a burnt red orange. Oh, gorgeous. This burnt color reminds me of the Southwest. Shout out to all our friends in the Southwest. Hello to all our relatives. And boom done, amigos. Look at, they are done perfect. You can fold them. They're not going to crack. Burrito time. <laughs> You're all set. This is going to be the best recipe for you to make if this is your first time making tortillas. The dough is so forgiving for your sweet little hands. I'm telling you, if you're going to make a tortilla recipe, this is going to be it. And you don't have to butter every single tortilla. We just do this. Uh, it's a comfort thing, you know. Just get it right off the pan and butter it up. For some reason, it does have to be the whole stick of butter for me. <laughs> See, nothing cracked. You guys got this. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say, uh... Oh, you're celebrating the tortillas. <laughs> He's just so cuddly. You ready, baby? Yeah. Do you want me to feed you? You want to feed yourself? You know I want to feed you. Open up. He's such a Open up! <laughs> I asked him, I said, I want to know what your favorite tortillas are. And he's going to say it right in front of you guys. He's a little bit on the spot right now. <laughs> Red. Red? All right. These are a winner. There you go. Friends, if you make this recipe, please let us know. Tag us on our social media. If you haven't subscribed, make sure to subscribe, comment, like this video. And um, we'll see you guys on the next one. That's it. You don't say bye. You're still eating. Bye. <laughs> Adios. You yeah. haven't been able to function. No, I don't know what the, 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 what is in here. It's a surprise, Punky. What if it's pork butt? Pork butt. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be really good in here, actually. Here you go. Some you want butter on there? Yeah. Oh, a lot or a little bit? A lot of butter. A lot of butter it up. You rowing today? Yeah. All right, then I'll butter it up. You're gonna need all that energy. I was thinking, who's special enough to come and say ah for mommy? Ah, <laughs> uh, you're so beautiful. He really went for the ah like him with the doctors. <laughs> so sweet. My sweet angel. What do you think? What do you think? You're already ready to yeah. it. Good? All I right, enjoy. It. All right, I'm gonna clean up. Hello and welcome, amigos. Today, I'm gonna be showing you how to make shrimp pozole. For those of you that are cleansing, those of you that are practicing Lent, this is gonna be a recipe for you, especially if you love shrimp and Mexican food. Okay, mis amores, what we have here is pink shrimp, and look at the size of this shrimp. It's really large, and these are the ones that you wanna buy when you wanna do some show stopping for your family or your suegra, okay? And then you get to see a lot of these shrimp at more um, Mexican stores and Asian or international markets, and you're gonna find that it has a little razor at the top, and that's what you wanna trim off. We're gonna continue removing the little razor from the top of the shrimp head, and we're gonna remove the shells. 
For those of you that don't have access to shrimp with the head, you can use your regular shrimp at your grocery store, the one in the frozen aisle, with the shell on. And if you still don't have access to that, you can always enhance the flavor that we're looking for by using some shrimp bouillon. Friends, don't be scared to clean your shrimp. You're gonna find a little bit of stuff here in the back. And you wanna slice it on the inner part as well. And you wanna remove all of the little junk that you see, okay? It's up to you, but we highly recommend that you clean your shrimp. Clean your shrimp. I'm, it's not going to be up to you. I'm telling you, bossy mommy, clean your shrimp. Because the last thing I want to see when I go to your house is get a shrimp and has a doo-doo bag in there, okay? <laughs> and for your large shrimp, all you want to do is cut a slit through the top. And this is going to be the showstopper, the one that you put right on the top hanging so it can look nice and beautiful and enticing. And with this one, for some reason, there is no slit to be made here at the bottom. It's pretty clean. What I'm gonna be doing with the shells, I'm gonna be using this BPA-free mesh that I used for our seafood boil that seems to be really popular right now. Thank you guys for the support. And we're just gonna pour them in here. If you have a different little container, those different little uh, bags where you can put your spices and boil with it, go ahead and use that, okay? Oi, oi, oi. I'm gonna tie a little knot. And we are gonna be rinsing this little bag before we put it in the pot. And we're also gonna be rinsing all of our shrimp. So let's go ahead and do that. So give that a good rinse, just like this. Any excess dirt or little things can get washed out through here. We don't want that in our broth. Want a nice, clean, delicious broth. And we wanna do the same thing with our shrimp. Just give that a real quick rinse, be gentle, and make sure that it is cold water that you're rinsing with, okay? And with your fingertips, you kind of want to caress it. Gives it a little exfoliation. <laughs> We've been asked a lot, do the Mexican clay pots work on an electric stove or a glass top? Let me tell you, we're, we're going to show you exactly what to do, okay? So you're going to use a diffuser, whether you're using an electric or a glass top. The reason we're going to use that is because if you just put this, clay pot right on that heat, it's gonna get stuck. There's no movement. For example, when you're using gas, there's a lot of movement in there. And with the glass top and the electric stove, you don't get that. So you do need to have a diffuser, which Cloud will link in the description for you. And we're also gonna be linking uh, where we purchased this pot, which seems to be that all of you guys sold them out, so. I think they're sold out. And <laughs> something that the diffuser is gonna do is gonna help uh, distribute the heat evenly. Correct, thank you Cloud for your help. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna place our clay pot and we're gonna bring our water to a boil. The other thing you wanna be careful if you're using a glass top is that the clay pots are heavy. So you run a risk of cracking your glass top and that's a risk that I'm willing to take for you guys. I hope you love me for it. Well, you're also being very gentle. <laughs> yeah, be very, very gentle. And uh, this won't be cooking for such a long time, so it's not like you're cooking a whole pozole in here with a pork or anything like that. This will be uh, a quick soup for you guys that's gonna keep you nice and, and happy. And honestly, if you're cooking in a clay pot, it just tastes better. I agree. To your pot, you wanna start off with 60 cups of warm water. You can bring it up to a boil, it's gonna take longer, but I like using the kettle. It just gets things done a lot faster. Add your shrimp shells, add two garlic bulbs, one large onion, and if you have medium onions, go ahead and use two. Add one tablespoon of salt. You're gonna add 15 bay leaves, and I have 15 here. Some of them are broken, some of them are full, so anywhere from 10 to 15 bay leaves is what you'll need for this recipe. So while this comes to a complete boil, we're gonna blend our chiles. To your blender, you wanna add your chilies with about a cup or two of water, just enough to get a good, smooth blend. And are those chilies uh, de-seeded? Yes, I removed the seeds and the stems. Since I'm using a high power blender, I'm gonna be careful when I blend. So what you wanna do is you wanna start slow and then pick up the speed because I have broken an uh, engine for a Vitamix before by just putting it on blast. So you guys paid a lot for this product, take care of it. Lessons learned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was one of the old school ones. I loved it and I didn't buy another one for a long time, but then I figured out that I was blasting it right from the start and take it easy. Warm up the engine. And boom, done. 
I heard you guys were talking about me with your tias and your moms behind my back, amigas. Oh, please, sure. you've never hit anyone with a spoon or a chancla. Calm down. <laughs> no, but my Filipino friends have. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Chicken moms and, you know. <laughs> Pour your blended sauce. If you're using a low powered blender, go ahead and strain it right into the broth. I used a large can of hominy and that's what we're gonna pour right on in. Sorry friends, I don't have time to, to do the nixtamalization. <laughs> if you are seafood lovers and you love that shrimp flavor, go ahead and use the shrimp bouillon. But if you have picky eaters at home and you still wanna enjoy your seafood and you don't want anybody complaining, Use chicken bouillon for the broth, and that's what I'm gonna do today. My kids are like, we don't want the shrimp broth today. So that's exactly what they sound like, I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> and you're gonna need to use about five to six tablespoons of your bouillon, whatever you chose to go with. And after about 10 to 15 minutes, you wanna come and taste the broth. If you need to adjust with a little bit more flavoring, go ahead and do that. I know that we've all been through a lot and our taste buds have changed, so go ahead and adjust to taste. Continue to cook your pozole for about 20 to 25 minutes or until you're hominy is nice and soft. So once your hominy is nice and soft, you want to get about two tablespoons of Mexican oregano. If you're not too fond of it, you can use a little bit less, but definitely add a sprinkle. It adds really good flavor. Add that in. Okay, what are you gonna do with that? We're gonna remove our shrimp baggie and give that a good gentle mix in a circular motion. And now it's time to add all of our shrimp. I have my burner on a high heat. I want this to boil when I add the shrimp so it can get them nice and cooked, soft, gentle, just like Cloud likes them. <laughs> Place the lid over your pot and continue to cook for another five to eight minutes. And boom, done amigos, we are ready to serve. This looks so good, I'm so excited to eat this. What I love is that you get a very clean broth. Look at that. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say ah. Uh... Buen provecho, mi amor. Thank you, I'm gonna be very careful. This is popping hot. I'm using one of our Korean bowls uh, so that this stays nice and hot while we're eating. It's gonna be spectacular. Ooh, mmm. Oh, that is so good. The shrimp flavor that pulls through is absolutely amazing. And we cook these shrimp to perfection. I love that you sprinkled some lime in the caldito and a chiltepin. Mm -hmm. Ooh. So good. That's the best part. So good. You can have this with some saltine crackers or some tostadas, but the soup is so good and that's what I'm focused on right now. Do you have any tips for us? <clears throat> yes, this is very hot and steamy. <laughs> Just like I you. do. Oh, okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I do have a few tips for you. If you end up using bay leaves that are really strong, you have the possibility of making your soup bitter. So go with 10 if you can smell it when you open your package. And if it's lacking a little bit of, of that uh, bay leaf scent, go ahead and toast them for a few minutes, maybe about 30 seconds, not minutes and um, use 15 of them. That's gonna help you guys out. Other than that, you guys are good to go. Just make sure to cook your hominy to a soft consistency and boom, done. Mm. Now, you all need to look away because this is gonna get dangerous for you. It's sister shrimp pozole time. It really is. When we eat seafood, we chat, we have a really good time and we hope you guys enjoy the time spent with us today. We love yeah, I'm getting romantic. It's seafood. Ah! <laughs> Hello and welcome.
up amigos? Today I'm going to show you how to make a fruit salad cake. For this recipe you'll need two and a half cups of all-purpose flour, one tablespoon of baking powder, one cup of sugar, three large eggs, half a cup of milk, half a cup of oil, half a cup of condensed milk, one and a half tablespoons of Mexican vanilla blend, half a teaspoon of salt, two cups of heavy whipping cream and half a cup of sugar. And if you don't have these two items, not to worry, guess what? I'm gonna make it easy for you today. You can use some Cool Whip. You'll need one small can of fruit cocktail and two cups of your small marshmallows. And I know this looks like a big can. That's all I have, so make it comfortable for your home. Four tablespoons of butter and about 10 to 12 strawberries to decorate our cake. Optional but not necessary, and I highly recommend it, we're gonna use one tablespoon of butter extract. We're gonna start by sifting two and a half cups of all-purpose flour, add one tablespoon of baking powder, and start sifting. Add your salt, and let's go ahead and set this to the side. To your bowl, you wanna add your eggs, what kind of sugar are you using? I am using Sulca cane sugar. You can find it in a big pack at your Mexican markets, your local grocery stores, and I absolutely love it. Go ahead and add your one cup of sugar to your eggs. I'm gonna be using a handheld mixer, and I'm gonna be using our beater attachment. So if you guys are using this on your stand mixer, go ahead and use your paddle, and that should take you about a minute. If you're doing this by hand, you can be there anywhere from four to six minutes. Add your milk, your half cup of condensed milk, and your vanilla. Give that a good mix until all your ingredients are well combined. Add about one third of your dry ingredients and start mixing. Add about one third of your oil and one third of your milk mixture and combine. And we're gonna repeat the same steps two more times. And boom, done. To your baking dish, you're gonna add a little bit of oil. You can use a nonstick spray or a little bit of the butter coating at the bottom. But today I'm just gonna use a little bit of oil. And now we're gonna pour our batter into our baking dish. I love that ribbon effect. Makes me so happy. And I don't want to see anybody licking the raw batter. Wait for the whipped cream. That's the best part. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> and now you just want to level out your batter. Once you've leveled your cake, you want to pick it up and pop it a few times. That allows all the little bubbles to come to the top. We're going to go ahead and place our cake in the oven at 350 degrees and it's going to be 25 to 30 minutes. Take your can of fruit cocktail and strain the juice. If you're a person that prefers to bite into a big juicy grape, go ahead and keep them whole, but for me, I don't, not in this particular situation, so I'm just gonna slice them down the middle, make them into smaller little bits, but we are gonna keep it in our fruit salad. You guys are gonna eat your grapes. Bossy mommy said, eat your grapes. <laughs> to your cocktail syrup, you're gonna add one fourth of a cup of melted butter. And whisk, whisk, whisk your day away, amigos. Whisk it up and shake it. <laughs> I'm in heaven right now, it smells so good. I'm trying to impress Cloud and my baby, so. Oh, we're always impressed. I'm Abuse Club, you guys have been asking me for sweets and here I am being super sweet, oh yeah. 
There was only one time I wasn't impressed with their cooking, and that's when. That's a long time ago. It was a worst Alfredo sauce, okay? Stop. <laughs> the OGs that have been here know. They know they about know. the Alfredo sauce. <laughs> Ignore Cloud and go ahead and add, before I forget it, your butter extract. And as I mentioned, it's not necessary, but mm, it feels so good. It makes a difference. <laughs> it does make a difference. Add two cups of heavy whipping cream and half a cup of sugar. No se piquen. Do you guys know what that means? No se piquen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do, unfortunately. Okay, <laughs> tell our friends what no se piquen means. Um, it means not to get carried away. Don't get carried away. Don't overindulge, okay? There's sweetness here, there's sweetness there. Take it easy. That smells so good in here, man. Es que traigo mis Woman, botas ahora. Folks, it smells everywhere. great. <laughs> Y'all, it smells great in here. And we're gonna start mixing. If you're doing this by hand, you're gonna be there about 15 to 20 minutes and you better not stop. You better beat it, beat it, because nobody wants to be defeated when you're whipping heavy whipping cream. So if you're gonna do a stand mixer, watch the um, Tres Leches cake video. I'll put it in the link below. But for me, I'm gonna start slowly and then speed it up. Yeah, that's what we're doing. <laughs> and boom, done. Friends, you're gonna see that my whipped cream is a little bit stiffer than you would see anywhere else, but there's a reason for this. When we add that fruit cocktail, it's still wet, so we want it to be able to hold and still give us the creaminess that we all absolutely love. Add your fruit cocktail to your whipped cream and fold it in. That's giving me the goosies. <laughs> And make it rain marshmallows, amigos. These are absolutely delicious. Cal's favorite. You impressed today? I love marshmallows. And just mix all your ingredients. In the smallest bowl you can find. In the smallest bowl. I promise you guys I ordered a bigger bowl. You could have gone smaller too. Don't tempt me, don't tempt me. And once you're done mixing your ingredients, go ahead and place this in the refrigerator. Friends, this cake here was baked in an oven that was not preheated. And what I mean by that is that as soon as it hit 350 degrees, I baked it. So I'm gonna show you right now what happens with your cake when you preheat your oven before baking. And this cake here has been baked in an oven that has been preheated for a minimum of 30 minutes. So if you want the nice fluffy cake that's just barely almost gonna peek out of your baking dish, go ahead and preheat your oven, wait 30 minutes, and then place your cake in the oven. I do find that it works best when it's hot to detach the cake from the sides. And you will notice that when you preheat your oven properly, you do have a little bit more of a toasty color at the top. Just absolutely beautiful. I've taken my cake out of the oven. I've allowed it to cool and it's been about an hour and 45 minutes. And start poking holes in the cake. Kind of like you would your Tres Leches cake. And the reason I'm doing this is because if you're gonna serve the same day, this is gonna give it a great flavor. But for those of you that are gonna keep this in the refrigerator and take a slice one day, wait a few days, um, this is gonna keep your cake nice and moist in the refrigerator. If you don't wanna do the butter syrup, you're okay. This cake is moist enough and it's just gonna be absolutely perfect with the cream, so it's gonna be up to you. I like giving you choices so that you can always make it comfortable for your home. And this time I'm gonna say no, use the syrup. <laughs> she wants the <a> syrup, everybody. <laughs> and now you're gonna pour your buttery syrup and I'm gonna start at the edges because you know those are the crispier parts and I want them soft. Nice and soft. Once you've done that, you're gonna place this in your refrigerator for 30 to 45 minutes. We want everything to be super cool and since my ingredients here were room temperature, um, because I didn't want the butter to get cold with the syrup, we're gonna place this in the refrigerator, so make some space. Once your cake has cooled, it's time to add your fruit salad. Yummy, yummy. Yummy, yummy. Since this cake is sticky, you wanna place your uh, fruit salad into little segments because you don't wanna lift it back up from the cake. And now it's time to spread. Once you spread your fruit salad over your cake, you can start decorating it with some strawberries or your favorite fruit. And if you don't have fruit, you can use a little bit of sprinkles, which I will be doing that for my son because he loves the Mexican sprinkles. So we have those there. 
And while you're slicing strawberries, you might want to slice a few extra because my kids, they came through right now and they ate all the pretty ones that I had uh, placed for you guys, so they beat you to it today. Yeah, those are my godchildren. <laughs> <laughs> they see sliced strawberries and they go for it. And all I did was, you have a machine to cut your strawberries or you can do it with your knife to just cut them into little slivers so that when everybody's eating them, it's a lot easier. And that's a story about the strawberry thieves. <laughs> And it happens. I'm warning you guys. And boom, done, friends. We're ready for a taste. Remember, when you're slicing, take it all the way through. Clean your knife. And boom, done. Who's ready for a bite? I'm going to need somebody very special to say, uh... Oh, my goodness. I almost forgot to add bibbes little sprinkles in here. Just makes the kids so happy. Buen provecho! Ah. <laughs> <laughs> no? Okay, here you go. Let me get you a napkin, babe. Oh. I dig the wet sponge. You dig the wet sponge, okay? It has like a taste of it as leche, but you put like, instead of like the same strawberries you put it with different greens and I like that about this. Do you like wet. that? Do you like it more yeah, soaked or is this a perfect soak? This is a perfect soak, I would say. Wow, it sounds like you've been watching a lot of baking. <laughs> oh, and you did good with the... <laughs> are these oranges? Are these oranges? Peaches, peaches. Yeah, peaches and, and sprinkles give it a good top. Do and you know? Do you want to know what all that fruit is? Is fruit cocktail from a cocktail? can. Cocktail? From a can? Yep. Do you guys recommend the sprinkles or no sprinkles? I recommend both, but without. It would taste good without sprinkles or with sprinkles. Okay. I recommend sprinkles. Yeah, he does. He loves sprinkles. So if you're going to use sprinkles, don't sprinkle them on until you're ready to serve. Yep. They're going to bleed on your on your whipped cream. <laughs> you done eating? So. Okay. No, I was, you, I, we were talking about my cakes. So oh, I okay. Down. You're so really I'm into this down. conversation. <laughs> you're so polite. Sweetie. I like... Uh, what do you, what's this, um, uh, what kind of whipped cream do you use? I used heavy whipping cream and sugar and then I mixed it until it was nice and oh, fluffy. Yeah? Yummy. Do you guys like the fluff? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So would you guys go with Cool Whip or with, uh, any kind of Anything cream? will, okay, anything good. will work. All right, guys. sponge? So are you said this one. He likes the, you like this the one? fresh whipped cream. Okay, mm -hmm. so are you guys going to be able to make this for, um, for the holidays? Mm -hmm. I might, I don't know how. You can make it? I'm gonna challenge you. I think so. I know what. I don't know. Should we challenge him to bake the cake? <laughs> <laughs> He's good in the kitchen. All right. You're gonna have to make one cake for us. Mm -hmm. Hello and welcome, amigos. Today I'm gonna be showing you how to make canned tuna sopes. And if you don't want to use tuna, that's okay. You can use some. <laughs> Let me get them. Some mushrooms. And this recipe works great with canned chicken or shredded chicken. So let's go over the ingredients. For this lovely recipe, you'll need two cups of maseca. If you don't have maseca, you can use fresh corn masa. Two cups of cold water, two cans of tuna, two minced garlics, a small bunch of chopped cilantro, one ripe juicy tomato, and half an onion. You can go with purple, yellow, or white. It's not gonna make a difference. It's just gonna enhance the flavor because you're making it comfortable for your home. Three chopped chipotles with adobo sauce, and three tablespoons of tomato sauce. And friends, in life you should have choices. You can choose your choice of oil or butter for this recipe. Half a tablespoon of Mexican oregano, one tablespoon of tomato chicken bouillon, one teaspoon of black pepper. One of our friends asked us, what type of tomato chicken bouillon do you use? We are using the Nor Select, but as long as it says chicken and tomato, go with that one. For your toppings, we're gonna to be using crema fresca, your choice of salsa verde, lime juice, thinly sliced lettuce, and some red radishes. Add two heaping cups of maseca to your bowl. Since I want my sopas to be crispy on the outside and soft on the inside, I just need a little bit of the extra help, so I'm gonna add half a teaspoon of baking soda. Add your cold water. And if you see, I only add a little bit of water at a time. We just wanna hydrate our masa. We don't wanna soak it. 
We don't want it to be over moisturized, if you know what I mean. Unfortunately, I do. So if you live in a humid climate, take it easy. Now, for those of you that are in the arid zone, you know, you might need a little bit more water. I used a cup and a half of the cold water in here, and that's all I needed to hydrate it to the consistency that I need, okay? I know the package says two cups of maseca to two cups of water, just take it easy. And now it's time to start making our sopes. Grab some masa, and sometimes you never know how much to grab, so you want to make sure that the amount of masa you're grabbing fits in the palm of your hands when you cup it just like this. Roll it up. And remember, when you're rolling your masa in your palm like this, it's because you want to smooth out any of the edges or little crevices that you have in there. So if you see any kind of little crack like that, when you press your tortilla, you're gonna see the crack. So at this point, if you see too many of those cracks, you can put a little bit of, of water on your hands, just dip it into a cup and then smooth it out that way too. So once you have a smooth ball, go ahead and place it in the center of your tortilla press. And if you don't have a tortilla press, that's okay. You can use your cutting board so long as you're using a plastic. And you wanna give this a gentle press. It's not gonna be as hard as you would for a tortilla because we need these to be a little bit thicker. And that's about the thickness you want for your sopes. I'm gonna go ahead and place this on a parchment paper using my baking sheet and I'm gonna continue with the remaining ones and then I'll meet you guys at the stove top. Hola amigos, hi friends. In today's infused water we have grapefruit, we have ginger, we have mint, and one fourth teaspoon of baking soda. And what that's gonna do is help alleviate the bitterness that comes with some of these mixtures. Stay hydrated and stay loved. If you're using cast iron on your glass top, you need to be really careful. You don't wanna shatter the glass. So I'm gonna place my comal gently and you're not gonna be shaking or moving anything around, okay? We wanna bring this up to a good heat. So I currently have it at a medium heat and we're gonna work with it. Place your sope and your comal. And a good tip for you guys is that you're gonna see it cook about a minute, minute and a half. You're gonna see the color change. So once you get it to about the halfway mark and you see the difference in color, that's when you wanna flip it. So you end up cooking your sope is about, I wanna say two minutes, about a minute on each side. The Once you flip it, the other side takes a lot less. And once your sope is ready, you see that the color has changed. I'm just gonna place our other one here. With a wooden chopstick, a wooden spoon, anything wood that's not coated, you're gonna dip it into your oil. And when you see a bubble, it's go time. Place your soap it into your oil. I'm gonna fit two in here, I think. I'm gonna make it happen, yeah. There we go. Can we put these in the air fryer? You sure can, just make sure to give it a good oily spray. Okay, thank you. Friends, if that oil looked a little suspicious, it's not. I repurposed my oil from our empanadas yesterday and that chile and the shrimp and all that stuff, you know, infuses the flavors and causes your oil to bubble up, bubble up just like that. We had this bubble cup. Bubble 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 bubble. <laughs> ma, 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 ma. No, 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 no. She needs to calm down, you guys. So all you want to do with your sope is fry it for about a minute, minute and a half, okay? Focus, focus everybody. <laughs> I'm gonna continue frying the remaining sopas and then we're gonna get started on our filling. Place your burner on a medium heat and drizzle a little bit of olive oil and I'm gonna be mixing it with butter. So that's about half a tablespoon of olive oil. Add one tablespoon of butter. Allow that to melt and have fun with it. Add your onions and your tomatoes. And we want to cook them till they're soft and that'll be about six to eight minutes. After about six to eight minutes, you're going to add your garlic, chipotle, tomato sauce, 
And the tomato sauce is not necessary. I just have a big can that I opened up that I have to use and you guys are gonna bear with me. Your tomato chicken bouillon, black pepper, Mexican oregano, and give that a loving mix. Oh, that looks beautiful. Add your tuna. And friends, since everything's so expensive all the time and you want this recipe to stretch, go ahead and add some pre-cooked cubed potatoes. All the teenagers just cheered me on right now, saying, yeah. <laughs> we love our papas. We love our papas and our papas. And our papitos and our papacitos. Mm -hmm. We love all of you. And I'm going to continue to cook on a medium low heat for about four minutes just until all of our flavors combine. And after four minutes, you're going to turn off your burner. You're going to sprinkle your cilantro, unless you're a cilantro hater. Give that a loving mix. And we are ready to serve. I'm going to need somebody very special to say, uh, here you go, sis. Thank you. Enjoy. How delicious. Buen provecho. Thank you. Mmm. These are delightful. Mmm. Yeah. Definitely go with potatoes. Ooh, the spice is good in here. Let me clean myself up. <laughs> and friends, I do have tips for you. It's called drink your water. And the second tip for the recipe is, is have a lot of fun making this recipe. If you're gonna be serving children or those that don't like spice, don't use all the chipotle, just use the adobo sauce and that's enough heat to provide the flavor that we need for this recipe. It's absolutely wonderful. It's super easy to make. You can get this done in about 30, 35 minutes. Now, if you're a beginner, it might take you an hour, but it's gonna be worth it. Whatever time you spend on it, it's gonna be time mm. well spent. Mm-hmm. Mm. Ooh. This is why I bug you to make this, it's so good. <laughs> mm. Sure, I can make it myself, but it doesn't taste the same when somebody makes it for you. <laughs> <clears throat> so, not only am I happy to be back in the kitchen cooking with you guys, to see my sister munching like she is right now, absolutely makes my heart melt mm -hmm. that's what dreams are made of good es, sisters good family and a lot of fun es que comida en la casa. Mm -hmm. mm, so good for our friends that don't know what comida en la casa means it pretty much means you have food at home so make it i hope cloud and i are inspiring you guys to cook at home and balance out eating out and cooking at home mm. The first one we eat with you guys, the second one, we're gonna eat at the table. We'll see y'all. Bye. Now in my head, I'm like, I'm gonna make this again. Hello and welcome, amigos. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make a super easy ground beef casserole. For the ground beef layer, you're gonna need one and a half tablespoons of Nora chicken bouillon, one to two pounds of ground beef, a can of tomatoes and green chili and three to four tablespoons of your favorite taco seasoning and if you don't have a favorite one i'll link a recipe in the description for you 10 to 12 corn tortillas two cups of your pre-cooked mexican rice a can of black beans for our toppings you're gonna need mexican sour cream and cheese blend iceberg lettuce your choice of hot sauce and some pico de gallo yummy yummy let's get started Place your burner on a medium heat and drizzle enough oil to fry our tortillas. Place your corn tortilla in the hot oil and fry on each side for about five seconds. And continue doing that to the remaining tortillas. In the same pan that we use to warm up our tortillas, you're gonna add your ground beef. Add three tablespoons of your taco seasoning. 
And remember to adjust depending on the brand that you're using. One and a half teaspoons of your Nord Chicken Bouillon and start combining your ingredients. And continue to fully cook your ground beef. Once you fully cook your ground beef, go ahead and add your can of diced tomatoes and chili. And continue to cook for about four minutes just so that our flavors are well combined when we add it to our casserole. And now for my favorite part. Let's start layering our casserole. Our bottom layer is gonna be filled with tortillas and I'm gonna overlap them because I really wanna have a good bite of a corn tortilla. Yummy, yummy. Our next layer is gonna be our Mexican rice. You ever have leftover rice? This is gonna be a perfect recipe for you. <laughs> Save your rice. Save a little bit of rice. And if you have beautiful teenagers that are always hungry, don't be shy with that rice. Fill them up. Our next layer is gonna be our ground beef mixture. And pour the remaining juices all over. You wanna keep them. They're so delicious. And you worked hard for it. <laughs> next, you're gonna sprinkle your beans. Next, you wanna add a little bit of cheese. I personally like the cheesy pool and I like the fresh cheese with my lettuce. So it's gonna be up to you if you wanna add this layer of cheese. I highly recommend it. And next, you wanna layer your corn tortillas. And now you're gonna place this in the oven at 400 degrees for about 10 to 15 minutes. And once you take your casserole out of the oven, you're gonna place a layer of your sour cream your crema fresca right on over. Don't be shy with it. Next is gonna be your layer of shredded iceberg lettuce. Don't get too fancy on this one with your romaine or anything. Make sure that it's iceberg, it just tastes way better. Your layer of cheese. Your pico de gallo. And next, you wanna add your layer of your favorite hot sauce. And the guacamaya hot sauce is one of our family favorites when I have to put it over a dish that everybody will enjoy because it's not too spicy and it's just absolutely perfect. Oh, you hear that crunch from that top layer? It smells good in here. Yummy, Love yummy. <laughs> ground beef in this. It's just such a perfect combo. The one that we made, the seven layer one that we made, the kids were asking me for it again, and I'm like, no, we're gonna switch it up just a little bit. Mom gets bored in the kitchen. <laughs> Ooh, can I do it? Can I do it? <laughs> you got this. Ooh, we're doing this. Ta-da, who's ready for a bite? I'm gonna need somebody very special to say, uh. Mm -mm -mm. That is so good. And friends, my tip to you is have a lot of fun when you're making this recipe and that's pretty much all you need because it's that easy to make. Mmm, so good. Hello and welcome amigos. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a California burrito casserole. We're going to start off by placing our sliced potatoes in the microwave for two minutes. I know, I'm using the microwave again. <laughs> After two minutes, you're going to take your potatoes and you're going to place them into your oil. And give or take about six minutes, our potatoes are ready. Can you sprinkle some salt on those potatoes for us? Wonderful, thank you. For this recipe, you're gonna need two to three cups of your carne asada, a lot of french fries, four to six flour tortillas, three cups of cheese, about one cup of Mexican crema fresca, about one and a half cups of pico de gallo, and your desired amount of creamy guacamole. I'm using large burrito tortillas, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna layer it at the bottom of our baking dish. 
place a little bit of crema fresca mozzarella cheese next your carne asada that smells so good right yeah <laughs> Ooh, who's excited <laughs> layer your french fries add another layer of cheese i mean who doesn't love cheese pull in their yeah. casserole yeah. raise your hand if you or say something if you like cheese. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You, you guys love it yeah all right then I'm, I'm doing good now it's time to seal our casserole you can fold your tortilla in this way just like that place your oven at 380 degrees and you're gonna bake for 10 to 15 minutes, okay? The first 10 minutes you're gonna bake with a parchment paper or a foil over your baking dish because, you know, flour tortillas will burn quickly. So after the 10 minutes, remove your foil and continue to bake until you get the desired crispiness that you like. Once your California burrito comes out of that oven, you're gonna go ahead and sprinkle some more cheese. Your crema fresca, if you don't have crema fresca, that's okay. You can use some sour cream. And what I like to do sometimes is use half Mexican crema fresca and half sour cream and mix it up. It gives a really good flavor. Your pico de gallo. And your guacamole. Go ahead and add your favorite hot sauce. And right now we're still loving the guacamaya. And that's how you make a California burrito casserole, amigos. Who's ready for a bite? Yeah. <laughs> you guys are? Okay, let's do this. Yummy, yummy. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say, ah. Uh... I feel the day is coming. She's like dying and go back into heaven. <laughs> so that's a yes? All right. Wait, hold on, I need to tell you about it. Oh, you wanna tell everybody about it? Okay. So I liked how, um, how you made the, the papas. How did you made it? Uh, we used french fries. Yeah the, yeah, the french fries. How did you use it? I chopped up some it? fresh potatoes and I fried them. Oh, I liked how you chopped up the fresh potatoes and um, the crema and the cheese makes it get flavor too. And the, che and the cheese inside makes it ooey gooey. Ooey gooey, so you like that? Yes, and the carne asada gives it. Yeah, the carne asada is fire. And I have somebody else that's very special, but I'm going to need you to say, ah. Uh, That look, that look. <laughs> Are you okay? Oh. <laughs> so good. I know you're picky with beef, so do you like it in this yeah. style? Okay, as long as it's carne asada. All right. Hello and welcome, amigos. I hope you're having a lovely St. Patrick's Day. Today, we're gonna be making smothered wet burritos in enchilada suiza sauce. And if you love enchilada suizas, you're gonna absolutely love these burritos. For this recipe, you're gonna need three to four chicken breast. If you're gonna be using a rotisserie chicken, it's gonna work great for this recipe. All I did was put my chicken breast into an Instant Pot and I'll leave those directions in the description area for you. So just make sure to shred your chicken. And this is not my favorite thing to do, so I'm gonna hand this over to Cloud so that she can finish shredding her chicken breast. <laughs> You'll need two to three cups of chicken broth, burrito-sized tortilla from your local market. If you wanna make these at home, I'll link a recipe in the description area for you. For your sauce, you're gonna need 10 to 12 tomatillos, half a bunch of cilantro, half a medium onion, two garlic cloves, and it's gonna be up to you to drop the spice where you need. Today, I'm gonna to be using two jalapenos and half of a serrano that I had left from our previous recipe. And to season our sauce, we're gonna use one and a half tablespoons of chicken bouillon. We're gonna use three tablespoons of sesame seeds and optional, a little sprinkle of nutmeg, which would end up being about one fourth of a teaspoon, but it's gonna be up to you if you wanna use your sesame seeds and your nutmeg. For the sauce, you're also gonna need two tablespoons of butter and two to two and a half cups of heavy whipping cream. If you don't have heavy whipping cream, you can use crema fresca or half and half. Last but not least, we're gonna need about three to four cups of melty cheese. To your pot of boiling water, you're gonna add your tomatillos, your onion, 
garlic, serrano, and your jalapeno. Continue to boil until they're nice and soft. That should be about 10 to 12 minutes. Next, you're gonna add your soft ingredients into your blender. Add your chicken bouillon, and if you don't want chicken bouillon, you can use a little bit of salt to taste. Your sesame seeds, your nutmeg, and I personally love it, so I definitely suggest it. Cilantro, chicken broth, And since I want you to be in and out of the kitchen, what you're gonna do is you're gonna add your heavy whipping cream into your blender. And if that heavy whipping cream looks chunky, don't worry about it. It's heavy whipping cream with a little bit of crema. So if you guys see this at the store, you're gonna need about four of these if this is all you're using. But this one just adds a little bit of a different flavor. And those are the benefits of not skipping these videos, okay? Now we're gonna blend until smooth. And boom, done. Friends, I totally forgot, but I don't want you to forget. You're gonna add your butter into the blender and blend it all together when the ingredients are nice and warm, okay? That's gonna cut a step for us, so don't forget to blend your butter inside the blender. I'm such a bad girl today. We're just getting chatty. Cloud is giving me some TikTok gossip, you guys. Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna blend until smooth again. Take your sauce and place it at the bottom of your baking dish. Make sure that you warm up your tortillas, and now you're just gonna add your desired amount of chicken. Make sure to load it up. It's a burrito. Drizzle a little bit of sauce. You can also add more cheese in here, and for those of you that have super hungry kids to feed, you can even mix your chicken with potato, and it'll taste just as good. I'm gonna continue with the rest of our burritos. Hang tight. Go ahead and add your sauce. And this recipe is good for about a dozen to about 15 burritos. It's gonna depend on how you fold them and how much you fill them up. I'm getting these super wet. Yummy, yummy. Usually we thicken the sauce by cooking it before we add it to our baking dish, but this is gonna thicken up in the oven and it cuts time for you guys that are super busy and still wanna eat super delicious. Next, add your cheese. And now you're gonna place this in the oven. You're gonna bake at 380 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes until you see all that sauce bubbling on the sides. For those of you that need to stretch the recipe, all I have here is about one chicken breast, one potato, half of a poblano pepper, one tomato and onions. And you can fill your wet burrito with this combination and boom bang. And that's what I mean by bubbling. Yummy, yummy, who's ready for a bite? With the remaining sauce, you can continue to cook it down and then you can place it in your freezer once it cools for a recipe that's gonna be super easy for you later on in the week. Or you can do what I'm gonna do today. I cooked it down, I'm gonna put it at the bottom of the plate and then I'm gonna serve our wet smothered burritos on top. Ooh, doesn't want to come off. <laughs> Who is excited and ready for a bite? I am. Ooh, me too. Somebody suggests that we take little bites. I'm gonna give you guys a tiny little taste today. Don't know why, but we all want a big bite. <laughs> and that's a little bite for you. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say ah. Uh, It smells so good. And just the combination right now is making me super happy. Oh yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the first bite, buen provecho. Yes, Claude got the first bite, okay? She's been super special and she deserved that bite. Thank you. Mmm. Mm -hmm. And friends, I do have a tip for you if you guys didn't see it. By me wanting to make a faster recipe so that you guys can eat good at home, I realized that 
Our smothered burritos taste a lot better if you don't pre-cook your sauce before you add it into your baking dish like we have in the previous smothered burrito recipes. Definitely don't do that anymore even if you see those recipes. This sauce is absolutely amazing and I'm gonna dare to say it, this is my favorite and the best smothered wet burritos that I have made. I agree. Hands down, so, so good. Ooh. Hello and welcome amigos. Today I'm gonna be showing you how to make tacos al vapor casserole style. For this recipe, you'll need refried beans, your choice of corn tortillas, your choice of cheese. Today we are using finely shredded cheddar cheese. Your choice of hot sauce, it can be boiled or fresh or even canned salsa. Just make sure that you blend it till smooth. Thinly sliced onion, shredded lettuce, a can of pickled jalapeños, and the reason for that is not only for the jalapeños that we want to bite when we're eating our taco, but we also need the juice that's in there. But if you don't want to use that, that's okay. You'll need one cup of water. To your hot oil, you want to add your corn tortilla, and you're gonna cook it on each side for about five seconds, okay? Give it a little fold. Let that excess oil drip. And it makes it easier for when we have to fill up our tacos. Boom, done. Optional but not necessary, I'm gonna be using some wax patty papers. And they're just gonna be easy to just grab and go. Cause sometimes if these oversteam, they fall apart and we don't want any of that, okay? So what you're gonna do, you're gonna place two scoops of your refried beans. For those of you that need a little bit of an extra bite from your beans, you can make this with frijoles puercos, which I showed you how to do in the seven layer dip casserole, and I'll link that in the description area. So once you add your beans, you can go ahead and add your cheese of choice. And I don't know, here in the States, you have cheddar and beans and it just melts your heart. Give that a little squeeze. Grab your salsa one side. And down the middle. Ooh, I hope I get this one. You pick up scoops just like your mother. You guys are so generous. You guys have big hands. Uh -huh. Oh, whoa, that's gonna be a good one. <laughs> oh, nice. You, you can help yourself. Let me, oh, <laughs> let me help it's you. Okay, ready? Babe. Look at You can even do it this way in your set. Nice. I'm all in your way here. We're we're doing uh we're doing some dancing today. Just let me move out of your way. <laughs> you put salsita in there? Yeah. Well, you can practice these tacos at my home anytime you want, sweetie. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh, we got another taker. You're next, Punky, okay? Wait in line over here. Wait, I think you. Los tacos al vapor. I make my extra, extra cheesy. Oh, wow. He's planning already. I'm worried. Never mind. That's a hot hunt. Nice one. I think you're doing an excellent job. Thank you. Alright, let me help you. I hope I get that one, sister. It's gonna be a mystery one there. Alright, run her up. Ooh, we can sell the salsa already. Mm -hmm. It would be, be good for the salsa? Mm -hmm. Is it nice and spicy, mi amor? Yeah, sabri. If you have the, um, the pinches, what are they called? Sabritones? Ooh, sabritones. Que yes, if you have this at home, you should try this. You should try with this dip. Pues no es dip, mi hijo. Es salsita picosa. Yes, but it can, salsa is also dip. Oh, okay. You're right. Yeah. You can use your, your thumb to yeah. scoop it in to help yourself. There you mm -hmm. go. See? Good job. Who knew we'd be doing home economics with these children? Right. Wonderful. <laughs> I can't even get it. <laughs> oh, you did it. That's perfect. Now you can add your cheese. You wanted just, to make it. It's just that a little, for you. Like, it's a, like a you little sausage. You said you wanted it cheesy. It's, I need a little bit more beans. Okay. Now I'm saying I hope I don't get this one. <laughs> no, you don't want it because it doesn't even have got much beans. Oh, okay. That one's for you then? Mm -hmm. Perfect. 
So friends, if you don't know what the hunt is, the hunt is that people in England hunt for foxes with a with a pack of hounds. With a pack of hounds? Yes. Wonderful. Oh, it's a soft hound. Okay. I have one thing on my hand, it's hard. You're doing a great job. Oh no, it's on the beans. Well, they're gonna get mixed up anyways, you're okay. And the right, making my first There you go, beautiful. Wow, okay. sweetie. Oh. Right, and now I do this, right? I didn't think that I'd ever record someone that moves faster than your mother. Oh, you, you won. Thank you. Thank you, babe. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Okay. Let's get, we have to finish them up, so hold on just a second. Take your can of jalapeno peppers and get some of that juice. Not everybody likes onions, so that's the reason we're going to place our onions here on the side. Not only are they gonna get super soft and delicious, but they're also gonna help us produce the steam that we need for these tacos. Oh, because onions retain water? Yes, ma'am. Yep. And now you're gonna add your jalapeno juice over them. Now, if you don't want that extra little spice from the juice, that's okay. You can pour a little bit of water over, okay? It's not too much of a spice, it's a gentle spice. It's a delicious. I mean, you can even put some of your pickle juice on here if you prefer, it's gonna be excellent. Don't be shy. I have one family member that doesn't have a preference for cheese, so that's what we're gonna do here. Just put a little bit of my onions. And you can do this at home too, you don't have to do the whole casserole. Just get your foil. And it's gonna go in with the rest. For this recipe, you are required to have a foil over your baking dish because we need to produce a good amount of steam. Let me try to make this as nice and tight as we can. To another baking dish, you wanna add two cups of water and you wanna place this at the bottom of your rack. Preheat your oven at 380 degrees and continue to bake for 25 to 30 minutes. Nobody wants to do dishes, so you can use your deli wax sheets on any kind of paper. And if it doesn't go through, I save my paper plate. <laughs> Take your desired amount of tacos. Ooh, 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 ooh. See, and that's when these little wax papers come in handy. And boom, done, amigos. Who's ready for a bite? Look at how beautiful they steam up. When you're frying your tortilla, make sure that it gets a little bit of a coating, like a crispy coating, because that's gonna make it best for this. So we're gonna get a nice little taste here. And you can never have enough salsa. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say ah. Uh... I think placing your lettuce and your sides right here just makes it for an engaging uh, taco session. <laughs> Steph, that lettuce is hanging on for dear life. Which one? The one off the plate. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Got Same. Buen provecho, Mika. Gracias, gracias. Mmm. Ooh, the hot. <laughs> Are they steaming hot? They're steaming hot. <laughs> Vapor means vapor, steam. And depending on the kind of tortillas that you're using, you're gonna see that your tortillas might fall apart. So these little wax papers are perfect for that. What kind of tortillas do you recommend? Ones that are a little bit sturdier? Mm -hmm. mm. And those sometimes tend to be yellow or white corn depending on your store, right? Like one mm -hmm. store, the yellow corn seems to be thicker for me. Oh, this is amazing. Mm. That's so good. 
The house smells good. No dishes to clean. Well, just the casserole dish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's okay. That's about it. We're loving that. This is perfect game day food. You can not only impress your gamers, <laughs> but it's going to be a super easy recipe. So you didn't mean game day like football? You meant like for gamers? Yeah, for gamers. <laughs> we got some gamers in our family. Yeah, we do. Some of us are included in that mix. It's time for you guys to look away. It's gonna get Hello and welcome, amigos. Today I'm gonna show you how to make salsa verde flour tortillas. And friends, let me tell you, don't skip because there's a few tips that I'm gonna be sharing with you that are gonna make a huge difference when you're making these tortillas. Ooh, you put your hair up. I did. Our elder suggests that I keep my hair up when making tortillas and I wanna make all of you happy, so put your hair up. <laughs> Start by adding two and a half cups of warm water to your blender. Some of you might say, how warm, Steph? If you've ever made a bottle for a baby and you put a little bit of the water on your wrist, that's when it's warm. If it's too hot for your wrist, it's too hot to go in here. I've roasted our poblano pepper, and as you can see, I removed the skins, the stem, and the seeds. So just tear it. Ooh, splashing everywhere, but tear it, <laughs> throw it in the blender. You're gonna add four tomatillos, and I'm just slicing them down the middle, just easier to blend. Not that this blender needs any help, but you guys know, it's a habit. And next, you wanna take a big bunch of cilantro. This will enhance the flavor of your tortillas and also give it that beautiful green color that we're looking for. And now you wanna blend until smooth. And boom, done, friends! Add your seven cups of all-purpose flour and set one cup of all-purpose flour to the side. Add one tablespoon of salt, give that a good mix, and next you want to add two-thirds of a cup of lard. Start combining your lard into your flour. I like to grab the flour and the lard and just give it a good squeeze. This usually helps me too. Once you see the crumble just like this, that means that we're ready to add our blended ingredients. So go ahead and make a little well. Add your blended ingredients. And start combining to the best of your abilities. When you're hydrating your masa, you wanna make sure that you mix it for four minutes while you're hydrating to get it nice and gooey, just like oatmeal, okay? So once you've done that, you're gonna sprinkle in half of that cup of flour we set to the side and you're gonna start with that. It's gonna depend on your climate, if you're gonna need more flour, if you're gonna need less. Look at the humidity levels, that has a lot to do with it. And don't get frustrated when it gets this sticky, okay? I can already feel just by mixing the dough that I needed that other half cup of flour. Now, Steph, how do we get rid of that stickiness? Let me tell you, amigos. You're gonna have to knead it. Whether it's on your stand mixer or by hand, like we're gonna do in just a few minutes. Take about one fourth cup of flour and sprinkle it on your counter. And release the green machine. <laughs> no, not your guys' green juice. <laughs> And now it's time to knead our dough. You can get the stickiness off your hand if you really can't stand it. I think that's what frustrates a lot of people. And don't quit on me. The tortillas are gonna be worth the stickiness. So go ahead and start mixing. For those of you at home that still have a lot of the stickiness going on when you're kneading your flour, you can sprinkle a little bit more flour and start like about two tablespoons at a time. Don't go too heavy. Cloud placed a cup of flour for me here. Thank you, sis. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a little bit at a time, rub it all around the sides that are all sticky, just like this, and I'm gonna keep kneading, friends. Continue kneading your dough for about 15 minutes or until it's nice and smooth. Is there a particular reason why this dough is stickier than the other doughs? Great question, Cloud. The reason this dough is a bit stickier than the other ones, it's because of the tomatillo. And friends, once your dough gets nice and soft, like this, you can squeeze your hands in it. It's gonna be slightly sticky still, but that's okay. Go ahead and make it into a big ball, just like this. 
took everything in. Take some lard. Warm it up Mr. Miyagi style on your hands. And if you guys haven't seen the Karate Kid, I don't know where you've been. Unless it's Yubi's Club Junior, but you guys probably already watched this season with your parents. <laughs> <laughs> you want to allow this dough to rest a minimum of 45 minutes in a warm spot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to place it in my bowl, place it in my oven, zero degrees with the light on. And these are going to be small for uh, taquitos and these are going to be for more burrito style tortillas. Once you've allowed your dough to rest, it's time to make our tortilla balls. So nice and smooth. And you can see as I'm making the tortilla balls, it's still slightly uh, tacky and that, that's okay. Don't worry about it. While you're making your tortilla balls, if you notice that your dough's a little bit dry on the outside, you can just lather your hands with a little bit of lard and start squeezing out your little balls. Take a little bit of lard, warm it up in your hands. and tap all your tortilla balls. We do not want them to dry out. Now you're gonna take one. You have two choices. You can either roll them with your hands in a circular motion and get little softies like that, or you can lay your palms flat just like this and roll it up. It's gonna be up to you. Now I'm gonna continue with the remaining tortillas. We have roughly four and a half dozen tortillas. They don't all fit, but we're gonna get started with rolling them. So at home, you might end up between four and five, and it's okay. Take your tortilla ball and give it a gentle roll. Press the outer parts just like this. And now it's time to roll. I know some of you like to make square tortillas and guess what? That's not a problem here in this house. All you wanna do is stretch them just like this until you achieve your desired circle. And now we're ready to cook our tortillitas. Make sure your burner is hot. One thing that you're doing at home that's messing up your tortillas and drying them out is that you're overcooking them. You only need about 10 to 12 seconds on each side and then you do a flip and boom, done. Are the parts that are not charred on here, are they raw? No, they are fully cooked. It's hot enough. It's just flour we're cooking. This isn't a roast cloud. Okay. And boom, done, amigos. All right, amigos, we are just about done. I have my stick of butter. I'm gonna butter this tortilla up for you guys. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna let you guys know that these tortillas pair great with anything pork. I found that that brings out the best flavor. Second would be chicken, seafood, and then beef. Because chile verde goes great with pork. It's just absolutely divine, it really is. Another thing that I'm gonna share before you guys take this good bite is, I have worked this recipe for you. This recipe is more intermediate level. If you haven't made tortillas and this will be your first time, do not start with this recipe. I'll link a recipe in the description area that's gonna help you out. Now, for those of you that are ready to make these tortillas, I found that using eight tomatillos gave it a better flavor and a little bit more than half of the bunch of cilantro. Ooh, 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 it's getting hot in here. <laughs> now I'm gonna need somebody very special to say, uh, hurry up and take a bite because my fingers are burning. <laughs> Thank you, darling. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Mmm, oh my gosh. How did you make this taste just like chile verde? Because <laughs> I've been working this recipe. Ooh. Ooh. Thank you guys for getting us to 900K. Here's to 100,000 more. Woohoo! 
Friends, if you haven't taken the time to subscribe, go ahead and do so. We enjoy the thumbs up and also reading your comments. Now, some of you don't like to share us and you keep us to yourself, but I think everybody already knows. So go ahead and subscribe and tell everybody you love us. We love you guys. <laughs> Thank you so much. Bye. You got me blowing kisses now. They deserve it. You deserve it. Mm -hmm. And you deserve what's coming next. Oh yeah. <laughs> Hello and welcome amigos. Today I'm going to show you how to make spaghetti verde in a casserole. For this recipe you'll need four roasted poblanos. Make sure to remove the stem, the seeds, and the roasted skin. Half a bunch of cilantro, four garlic cloves, half a white onion, and if you need a little bit of spice you can use one jalapeno or your desired amount of serrano. One box of cooked spaghetti and make sure to save one cup of your pasta water. Two cups of Mexican cream, and if you don't have access to Mexican cream, you can use uh, Mexican sour cream or heavy whipping cream. Two cups of mozzarella cheese, one and a half tablespoons of chicken bouillon, and one teaspoon of black pepper. And for those of you that like a little bit of crispiness on the top, you can use a little bit of panko like we did in our mac and cheese, which I'll link in our description area. Add your cup of pasta water to your blender. And friends, shout out to our friends in Houston making crema mexicana just like they do in Mexico. Oh yeah. We'll see you soon. We'll see you soon, H-Town. Oops, was I supposed to say that? Oh, well, we got excited. Yeah, you'll see us soon. <laughs> so go ahead and add all of your crema in here. And I'm just gonna squeeze it out of this bag, which you pretty much get everything in a bag in Mexico. Add your black pepper. Oh, this crema is amazing. It's so good, right? It's super creamy. Chicken bouillon. cilantro, jalapeño, garlic, onion, and our dearly beloved roasted poblano. And now you're gonna blend until smooth. And boom done, amigos. Preheat your oven at 380 degrees. Add your spaghetti. I love noodles like that. This is gonna be so Watch good. Spaghetti just freshly done, you know? Yes. I know I had a lot of the noodles and I'm just like, I feel a little bad because I don't know if I left enough for everybody. <laughs> and next you're going to pour your sauce right on over. And it's going to be a lot easier if you mix your spaghetti right inside your baking dish. Make sure you mix well because we don't want any sticking and we want every single noodle coated with this sauce. and sprinkle your favorite melty cheese. Today I'm using mozzarella, usually like Oaxaca, but I used it up. La Vasadero, H-E-B has a good one. You guys are looking for one. <laughs> I wish somebody would tell me what the special ice cream flavor of H-E-B is right now. Yes, can you guys tell us what the H-E-B ice cream flavor is of the month, of the season? And I miss Texas so much that we went to Rudy's and shout out to Rudy's, they really know how to make good barbecue. Mm -hmm. I recycle my cups, okay? It's not soda. We'll see you soon, Austin. <laughs> we'll see you guys all soon. <laughs> Who we need to see soon is San Antonio. We're gonna see them as well. Mm-hmm. Shout out to our friend, Sinister Senorita. You are beautiful. Mm -hmm. We love you. For those of you that are gonna be using panko crumbs for the crispiness, this is a part where you would add it. But since I like to pair our spaghetti verde with crispy chicken, um, I'm not gonna be adding panko to the top. My oven tends to get super hot to the point where it's, it'll burn everything on the top for me here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a parchment paper. You can use a foil. Allow your spaghetti verde to rest for a minimum of 10 minutes before serving. The longer the better. But for us, we're just hungry, so. I'm gonna sprinkle some cotija cheese over the top. If you don't have cotija, use a little Parmesan. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say ah. Uh... Mmm. 
That is absolutely amazing. That's so, so good. Hello and welcome amigos. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make the sangria that Cloud and I have been talking about since we were in Texas. So whether you like to have an alcoholic beverage or a non-alcoholic beverage, not to worry, Cloud and I got you. For the sangria, you're gonna need your favorite bottle of Pinot Noir, one bottle of raspberry lemonade, one orange and two green apples. And to keep it nice and fresh, we're gonna use the juice of one key lime. Let's start off by adding some ice to our container. And next what you're gonna do is you're gonna decorate your container with your orange slices and we're gonna place them all around our container. Ooh, those are some gorgeous oranges. They're really pretty. Ooh. Mother nature. Does it, does it good. Does it again. <laughs> <laughs> and next we're gonna pour our bottle of wine and you can't be a great casserole mom if you don't engage in, you know, wine every once in a while. When so, you have the tumbler with your, with your name on it? Yep. <laughs> the tumbler that looks like a coffee cup? That's the one. <laughs> Those PTA meetings sure are fun. <laughs> You're sneaky, Cloud. <laughs> Add some more ice. And we do have a story for you how this drink came about. It happened in magical central Texas. We were watching Netflix one evening and uh, we were watching you, the show. We ordered pink lemonade from where? From Olive Garden. Oh, that's right, from Olive Garden. And Steph said, hey, I'm gonna create sangria from this. And I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> but I loved it so much. We we wanted wine and then we had ordered raspberry lemonade and it just was a beautiful combination for us. Oh, that's right. That's the time when alcohol was being delivered in Texas. Well, yes. it still is, I guess. Yes, it is. Okay, so now I'm gonna take a big handful of our apples. Tell us in the comments what drinks you've created when you're having fun with the girls. Or during, or or during quarantine. Or during quarantine. <laughs> and a little bit of citrus. You can use uh, key lime, lemon, or lime, and that's just gonna help you preserve this drink. So if you have a celebration, a get together, boom, done. Place it in your refrigerator. You're all set. I'm gonna need somebody special of drinking age to say ah. Uh... And for those of you that require a little bit more sweetness out of your drinks, what you can do is you can use one fourth cup of sugar Squeeze your lime in there, mix it, and then add it to your drink. You have to dissolve the sugar before you add it to our sangria. For our non-alcoholic sangria, you're gonna need a bottle of your favorite raspberry lemonade, one container of 100% grape juice, one orange, and two green apples. Now, if you don't have access to this lemonade, not to worry. Pick your favorite lemonade from the freezer aisle. It's so easy. It takes less space in your refrigerator, and it's gonna be a boom done. Add your ice and start decorating your container, your vitrolero. What do you call this, Cloud? A jug? Um, dispenser? Dispenser. <laughs> it's a dispenser. <laughs> That's where you hang out by the water cooler, I think. <laughs> you know, these containers or dispensers um, have been helping my family drink a lot more water. So that That's makes me really happy. I hope that they're working out for your family too. That's the same for us at the house. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Makes me happy see all of you hydrated. We don't need no lizards. Yeah, you can see it in my face, I'm super hydrated. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Your raspberry lemonade. This is such a nice treat for when the kids give their personal best in something to celebrate. Yes. Right? Shout out to all the Views Club Junior showing up to school even though everything is just beyond stressful. And oh. you're still doing your best no matter what. And as far as your water, it's gonna depend on your jug, really. So just go ahead and pour until it can't take no more. So right about there. Add your apples. You can leave it like this to show off or you can give it a good little mix. See 
you can keep this at the kids' table, right? Or like, how do you separate one from the kids tonight? Great question. I'm gonna show you right now. Thank you. To differentiate your drinks, you can put a nice little bow up here with, um, I have a little mesh bag here, but just to give you an idea. You can put something like that. You can put a little toy up here. You can really decorate it however you want just to signify that this drink is for the kids. I like that idea. Yeah, we have to be careful because the kids, they don't know. They're very similar in color, so we just want to keep you guys safe out there. Y'all know how to pair it. We're just giving you an idea. Yes, my kids already know. They know. And I actually put one in one section where they're used to getting their water and the adult one is somewhere else. That's true. You do have a designated <laughs> designated kid section. I do. And then I usually, um, for drinks, when there's little kids around, I usually go with uh, mason jars because you can close the top. I love that. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get a taste. Cheers. Salud. Cheers. Yeah, this is that refreshing drink that you just want to chug. You know what it reminds me of? It's so light and delicious. It reminds me of ranch water, but very, very girly, right? <laughs> <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, combo that we have. Cloud and I, when we're hanging out together, this is a cocktail that we like to enjoy. So we hope that you guys enjoy it as much as we do. And remember, don't hurt anyone's feelings if you're drinking. Be nice to each other. And if you can't handle yourself, go in your room. Stay away. <laughs> Take a nap. <laughs> Take a nap. Welcome, amigos. Today I'm going to show you how to make crispy, cheesy potato tacos with flour tortillas. And let me tell you, you're going to absolutely love this recipe because it's so easy to make. But first, we have to go over the ingredients. Hey, what were you doing with Taki so early? Me? Yeah. I just wonder if I could have some. You know what the hardest thing for everybody to do is? Put the tortillas with their hand. <laughs> <laughs> that that too. That. For this recipe, you'll need six to eight potatoes. Your choice of flour or corn tortillas. Today, I'm going to be using our salsa verde flour tortillas, which I'll link in the description area. Two green onions or one large Mexican green onion. Half a cup of sour cream. Half a tablespoon of salt and onion powder. And for frying, we're going to be using a combo of butter and oil. And for our topping, we're going to be using finely shredded cheddar cheese, iceberg lettuce, and your choice of hot sauce. And today I'm going to use guacamaya. It has a little bit of a sweeter taste to it, and it's not as spicy. The kids love this one. Peel your potatoes, chop them into big chunks, bring your water to a boil, add your potatoes, and continue to cook for about 8 to 12 minutes or until they're soft. You see my fingers are far away from everything? Yes. Can you do that? Yeah. Wow, I wonder when she's going to graduate you from a butter knife. You ready for the other knife? Yeah. Okay, let's do this. All right, friends. He's going to slice with the big boy knife. Mom's going to show you how to hold it. Ready? Keep your fingers away from the blade. Tuck. Oh, you tucked in those nuggies. I'm going to have to wrap your hair because the señoras are going to tell you something about it. <laughs> and then you're gonna go slightly. We're gonna do it together and then you get to do it on your own, okay? You received a lot of compliments yesterday on our video. Do you wanna say thank, thank you. you? Thank you. Okay. Whoa, you went big on that one. Like that pinky in baby. Ah! Thank Nicole. you, helper. <laughs> that is beautiful lettuce. That's how I used to cut lettuce when I was a kid. <laughs> That's gorgeous. Okay, just finely chopped just like this. Thank you, baby. Where are you going? Go us a sip. stay here, babe. You okay. stay here? You want to tell everybody what you're doing? Or what you just did? Um, I cut the lettuce and put some... Limon on it. And then. Oh, oh, I'll take our potatoes. Ah! You have to put it in a bowl. And then what are we going to do next? Put it in the fridge. That's right. Keep it nice and crispy. How does he know? <laughs> <laughs> you like cookie movie? Yeah. You remind me of your mom when she was little. She just knew. <laughs> when you know, you know. For these onions, I like to peel that extra layer right here but if you make a little slit with a knife or something sharp like your mom's nails that are nice and clean you can <laughs> just peel it off right there okay. want to peel it off yeah okay. 
You want to be in the thumbnail with me today? Yeah. Okay. I think the last time that you fully cooked on the channel was when we were in Texas and we made the um, kale quesadillas. Oh, yeah. We haven't made those in a while. We need to get back on it. So I'm going to slice the ends. You can wash these, put them in soup, save it to the side, and I want to remove the stem. Mm -hmm. But what we want from this recipe is only the green part. So I'm going to save this part here for a different recipe. I'm going to slice that down the middle. Okay. Do you want to use your butter knife for this? I think so too. Hold on a second. <laughs> then you're gonna chop it thinly, as thin as you can, okay? Like that. And, and you can go again. Because we want them to be like uh, sprinkles in our in our potatoes. Uh, so usually if you start from a point right here, do you see this little opening? Yeah. If you put your knife right there and pull it through. Do it one more time so you go all the way in. There we go. All set. You can even do a little bit more on that side. Do you see that opening? Yeah. Okay, right there. Wonderful. So what I like to do is I like to put them together just like this. And then start slicing really, really thin. Those are chunks. Thinner. We're going to need thinner. <laughs> Let me show you how thin, okay? Okay. My ride's here. Here, he that. Look at. I know that with the butter knife, it's kind of difficult to do that. So try to get as thin as you can. Okay. Like that. Thin. Beautiful. That'll work. Think of sprinkles. Mmm. That put a smile on your face. <laughs> we had a cortadillo yesterday, and that mm. what was it? Raspberry cream on the top. Oh. Yeah. Was it good? Oh, it was so good. We're gonna have to make some. You're going really thick. Not to worry, babe. That's why your mama's here. While you're doing that, I'm going to check if our potatoes are nice and soft because that's our next little step, okay? Okay. Oh, can use a few more minutes. And boom, done. I love it. I love it. You did such a good job. I'm going to come in. I'm going to chop it up finely because I need it super fine to fit in the potato. Come back. I'm going to chop this super fine so that we can... Uh, Add it to the potatoes and there's more sprinkly because this would be great for a salad but yeah. you didn't do anything wrong this is perfect mm -hmm. but i need them a little bit smaller and i know that that knife was not going to give us that okay okay but you did Daddy an egg yeah Daddy yeah did. it's a beautiful job you have magic hands mm -hmm. thank you you do too thank you you're so sweet <laughs> i came to the right house a little love party. Woo! It's all that sweet tea I had when I was pregnant with you. Mm. <laughs> that makes you super sweet. Yummy. You're welcome. Ah! Do you see when I'm like this? Yeah. Or how my hand goes? I'm not right here like this, right? Yeah. Okay, good job. But you already know all that. Say trick or treat, baby. Trick or treat! <laughs> All right, we're going to set that to the side and strain our potatoes. Ready for that? Yeah. Okay. You want to scoop that out? Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to add two teaspoons of onion powder. And... One teaspoon of salt? Two. Two? Yeah. Two teaspoons of whatever uh, ingredient you're going to add is going to be close to half a tablespoon. Okay. There you go. You can open it up all the way. You need a little more than that. Everybody likes a good salt. To their potato you know yeah french fries when you don't have enough salt in your french fries it's like eh, something's missing yeah okay i'm gonna pour the potatoes in here be careful please all right ready i'm gonna give the initial mash so it's easier for you and you just want to come in here and go i see suavecito sorry ready <laughs> Ooh. 
You guys can use a cup at home. You don't have a potato masher. Once I get this good mash, we're gonna get a spoon and just give it a good mix, okay? Okay. So the only thing that everybody has to do is adjust to taste. You know what that means? Um, make it taste good. <laughs> yeah, make it taste good. So if you taste, once you combine all your ingredients and you taste it, and you feel like you can add a little bit more salt, a little bit more of this or of that, you're more than welcome to. So go ahead and sprinkle in our onions while I get you a spoon. Ooh, delicious. We're definitely relatives. We cook the same. Yeah, you do. We have the same rhythm, except he's a bit more focused. He's very, very gentle. Uh-huh. And leave it to me. Leave it to me to use a small bowl of it. We'll make it work. You ready for the mixing part? Yep. Okay. We're going to mix it, and if you see a lot more chunks or anything that needs to be mashed, we can go back with the masher and mash it. Okay? Okay. They don't all have to be completely mashed potatoes, but just a good mash where you get a good bite. But yeah. if, if our friends like it really soft, give it a really good mash like mashed potatoes. Oop. So one of the things that helps me, let me show you, ready? You get a spoon, scoop it all the way in. And it's kind of hard. Mom didn't make it easy for you today. Sorry about that. Okay. You get the hard things done first, then you get the easy stuff. Next. That's right. That's right. You are listening to mommy. You know what the hardest thing for everybody to do is? Put hmm. the eyes with their hand. <laughs> <laughs> that, that too. <laughs> that too. Um, no, wake up in the mornings because you're all cozy and nestled oh, yeah. in your bed. So, let me. Make sure that you have enough to work with here. We're getting there. We're getting there. I promise you I'm going to get a bigger bowl. <laughs> bigger bowl. <laughs> you can scoop some of those potatoes out and I'll eat them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll give you guys space. Okay, you're going to have to wait for the end when we need somebody very special to say ah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you want to try mash? Yeah. You've been working out? <laughs> You've been rowing? <laughs> right, we got some right here. Need a mash. Wait, do you row? No. You do row. Yeah, I, I row. Then why'd you say no? Oh, you meant like professionally. Yeah. That's what you're already <laughs> thinking. Oh my goodness. <laughs> nice to my... You're going to be a pro soon, babe. Thank you. Do you do yoga? Oh, wow. baby yoga? You guys still do your baby yoga stuff? He just smiles. <laughs> I know you're not a baby. I know, I know. Do you still do your Tai Chi meditations? Um, <laughs> I don't do that, but I meditate at okay. night. Good job. Nice, sweetie. Okay, you want me to help you with that? We are having way too well, much fun. goes to another dimension. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me give it another mash for us, okay? Okay. Oops, sorry. There you go. Enjoy that. Thank you. <laughs> Why'd you leave? You can taste it on camera. I'm going to make this bowl work. I don't want to wash another dish. <laughs> it wasn't salted with it? It wasn't salted? No. It's perfect. Oh, okay. I'm going to test it right now and I'll let you know. He said it was perfect. I'll let it's you know best. if I need more salt. And if you don't want to continue on with the other steps, all you have to do is add some butter, get a bowl, and there's your dinner. <laughs> is that what you're going to do? Uh-huh. We're just getting a little messy. Make sure you pick a bigger bowl. I was trying to give you guys a good view, but, you know... You gotta do, do no, what you, you can keep here. getting a small bowl and dropping all of those bits of potatoes. It tastes like a little bit of onion dip, doesn't it, Ruby? Right? Yeah. Like potato chips and onion dip? Ooh. Well, you know what? I love sour cream and onion anything, and 
Usually I just mix it with a little bit of sour cream or crema and season it. But today I want to do something special. And for those of you at home, if you have a little bit of bacon bits, you can add that here. A little bit of choricito. Ooh. What else would you add in here, baby? I think I know, but... Cheese? Yep, we have cheese going on. I thought you were going to say corn again. Oh, corn, yes. <laughs> you can add a little bit of corn. And if you have a sister that doesn't like to eat her carrots, go ahead and sneak in some carrots. All right, I'm going to need you to give that one good mix, and then we're going to set it to the side. Do you know why we added sour cream to the potatoes? To make it like a creamier texture? So what the sour cream does is that it helps it stick. All right, let's give it a taste. Ready? She said give it a taste. I need it. more salt. I knew it. I called it. Didn't I say that? She's going to add a little bit more salt. I know how your mom cooks. <laughs> I'm going to add a little bit more salt because they're potatoes. And the onion is absolutely perfect in there. I think the sour cream is enough. I think you ended up going with three-fourths of a cup. Yep. Sounds good to me. You ready to assemble... A lot of tacos? Yes. All right, let's do this. Before you fill your tacos, you want to warm up your tortilla. You can use a microwave, warm it up a few seconds, or you can do it on your burner. You don't want to overcook them, just enough to where they're warm and pliable. I'm going to show you one and then you can do the rest. Sounds good? Yeah. Okay, so place your tortilla. That's the part that when you first put a tortilla down, that's the part right here. You can just see it. The can face? you see yeah. the difference? Yeah. So that's the one you want to place and you want to place it down just like that. The tortillas have to be warm because if you're using cold tortillas and you fold them, they're just going to break. Okay? Okay. Take a good scoop like that. And you get to decide how much filling goes into your taquito. So you're just going to put it on one side. Give it a loving fold. And set it to the side. One of the things that helped me when I'm making a bunch is I line them up just like this. Let me get the cheese out for you, sweetie. Oh, the cheese goes on at the end. Oh, no. Unless you, you can put cheese inside and warm it up. Super gooey cheesy. But I'm more into like a crispy, put that fresh cheese on yeah. there and the fresh lettuce. Taco Bellish, you know? <laughs> My worst nightmare. Oh, you're getting new techniques. I like this. Let me come on this side. Let me help you. Thank you. wonderful it's beautiful thank you well I didn't think I could be impressed today I woke up and said there's no way anyone's gonna impress me today and I was wrong do you like cooking yeah so your favorite yes cooking or building Oh, that was hard. <laughs> both. You can do both. Yeah, both. Okay, and then if you line these up just like that, it makes it a lot easier for us when we have to cook them, okay? Okay. We're going to continue to fill these tortillas in, and my mom will meet us at the stove. <laughs> okay, baby, good job. Okay. I'm going to trust you with all of these, okay? Are you grabbing just like a spoonful? Is that what? A We're big doing? spoonful. A big spoonful? Okay. That's about a fourth of a cup, you guys. <laughs> you are hungry today. You're fine. It'll work. Am I doing good? You're doing an excellent job. Thank These you. are going to be the best potato taquitos I've ever had. I have a feeling that you're really good at making feelings for your tacos. Place your pan on a medium heat and drizzle a little bit of oil. I'm using olive oil and butter today because butter and flour tortillas is just the best flavor ever. I 
And I'm starting off with just a little bit of our oil butter blend because as you start with your batches, your tortilla is gonna absorb all of that. So you wanna start a little at a time. Continue to cook for a minute to a minute and a half on each side or until crispy. Those tortillas really pack flavor. Yeah, this is gonna be one of the best tacos we've had today. I've been thinking about them, like how did you get them to taste like salsa verde? Yeah, I, I feel like eight tomatillos uh, does a lot better than the four. Mm -hmm. But you know how when you're like, oh, I'm missing a tomatillo, I don't want anybody to feel like I can't make them. But if you want a really good flavor, yeah, and if you roast that poblano pepper, ooh, and for those that want pique, just mm -hmm. a serrano or um, a jalapeno will do the trick. And we're linking the recipe in the description box. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a little work, but it's so worth it. We're going to give this one more flip so you can see the color that you want so that they can come out crispy for you. These are about done. It took me about two, three minutes to get this done. And I'm going to set these to the side. Oh, there we go. While I continue to make the remaining tacos. But before you do that, when your pan gets to this part, use a paper towel, clean it up. Or else you're going to end up causing a horrendous taco burn and a stinky house. And I don't want you guys to get in trouble. <laughs> We're almost done. Are you excited for a little taste test, baby? Yeah. And these are super easy to fill because you can just open it up like this. Oh, I know who chopped that lettuce. It's beautiful. It was Remo. <laughs> and we love sour cream, so we are gonna go with a little bit extra. Ooh. And boom, done. Who's ready for a taste? Me. Yay! I'm gonna need somebody very special to say, ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Mm. Are you gonna be able to eat all these tacos? I put extra lettuce here for you because apparently you're obsessed with lettuce. <laughs> there you go, baby. You liked your creation? It's yours. No, 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 no. You made the tacos. They're your creation. Buen provecho, bebe. These are the best tacos I've ever had in my entire life. Oh, really? <laughs> because you made them? <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy, bebecito. How many are you going to eat? Five, four, three, two? Five. Five? Okay. I better get started. I'm making you another one. <laughs> Hello and welcome. Amigos, today I'm going to be showing you how to make birria tatemada in your oven. I know a lot of you don't have access to a grill. Most of the time this recipe is done in the grill, but for us that want this recipe because it's so good, I'm going to show you how to make this in the oven. And let me tell you, this is a recipe you're going to absolutely love. That's ready. That's ready to go in our valley. For this recipe, you'll need five pounds of chuck, and friends, I know that beef is pricey right now, and this recipe works great for a few meals for this week. You'll need one tablespoon of ground cinnamon, ground clove, sugar, ground cumin, onion powder, black pepper. You also need about eight bay leaves, one tablespoon of hatched chili, three tablespoons of chicken bouillon, half a tablespoon of marjoram, and one tablespoon of Mexican oregano. Friends, you can drop off the spice wherever you want here, okay? Keep the Anaheim, that is the amazing flavor, but for us today, we're gonna get a little bit of a kick out of this recipe. So I'm gonna be using one jalapeno, one serrano, one large Mexican onion, eight garlic cloves, one medium onion, and friends, let me tell you, if you don't have the Mexican green onions, that's okay. You can use the regular ones. Just make sure to remove the seeds, the stem, and the skin from your roasted Anaheim pepper. And guess what? If you don't have Anaheim pepper, go ahead and use your poblano. Three tablespoons of olive oil. And friends, that one occasion where I'm using vinegar with my beef, it's gonna be when it's going in the oven and we have one third cup of white vinegar. Now, if you only have apple cider vinegar at home, guess what? That's okay, make it comfortable for your home, but it is gonna give you more of a barbecue taste. All right, friends, I'm not trying to get too messy with you today, so it's easier for me when I arrange our spices on a plate for you guys to just go ahead and pour it into a parchment paper. 
But before we add our spices, we're gonna add all of our delicious fresh ingredients right at the bottom because if you add your spices at the bottom, you get a lot of them stuck. So we need all the juiciness to pull through. And it'll end up like bebe tacos. All the spices <laughs> on the bottom. All the spices <laughs> were on the bottom of my bebe They were delicious. Thank you guys for being so sweet to him. Yes, thank you guys so much for all the kind words. Uh, we appreciate that. You know, one thing I forgot to tell you guys is that we are gonna need about one to two cups of water. Hmm, I'm a bad girl today. What can I tell you guys? And you're gonna adjust as you're blending, okay? Make it comfortable for your home. <laughs> your olive oil, some vinegar, and now your spices. Woo! That's gonna be a delicious party in there. It See? smells amazing. <laughs> yeah, it does. And keep your parchment paper like you do the plastic to your tortilla press. But don't push it. If you guys get all nasty with it, toss it. <laughs> and now we're gonna blend until smooth. And boom, done! Ooh. And now it's time to pour our blend right into an amazing baking dish. This is a baking dish that I have here. I've had it for years and Sometimes I can get the little crusties off, sometimes I can't, but I'm not too stressed out about it. I know it's clean. Make sure we get it at the bottom. Pour it over. That's the fridge, that's not me. The fridge is making ice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness. My, uh, my punky chews on ice like if it's chewing gum, so. I like to chew on ice as well. Let us know if you're a nice chewer down below. <laughs> that reminds me of when you were pregnant. Down below. All you did comments. was chew ice. <laughs> yep. All right, amigos, once you add your blend, you have a few choices. If your family needs to eat within a few hours, guess what? This recipe is so delicious that it'll work, but it does work best when you guys marinate it one to two days. And since we added vinegar to our blend, you guys are gonna be good to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna marinate this for one whole day that is 24 hours. So I'll see you guys when it's time to place this in the oven. Will you be wearing the same thing in 24 hours? <sighs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Expect a wardrobe change these days. Yes, it, you know what happens. In order to get you the best recipes and to make it fun for you guys, sometimes it does take two days. So I'm gonna show you how much better it tastes and how much softer and tender your beef is gonna be if you allow this to marinate at least overnight. I know some of you have a lot of snacks in the refrigerator and leftovers and condiments, mostly condiments. Um, the other thing you can do is you don't have to place your whole baking sheet into the oven. You can place it into your Ziploc bag and then boom, done. And any leftover marinade that you have, you can marinate some chicken with this and ah, so, so good. One of the things that I like to do when I'm roasting birria is I like to go in about every hour and flip the big piece of beef over. You don't have to, but I like it. Now, if you don't flip it, you're gonna end up with more charred and harder pieces, which is equally as delicious. But this is what I like to do, and you guys can make it comfortable for your home. And when I flip the beef, I like to pour a little bit of the sauce over as well. Oh, it's so fragrant in here. It smells so good. It really does, it really gets your, your tummy growling because you just want to eat it now. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna start shredding our beef, but before I do that, let me show you what our tofu looks like. This is what your tofu will look like. You don't have to flip your tofu, you just keep it in that same way. I use soft tofu, but it'll work with medium or um, firm tofu. And all you wanna do is just spread a little bit of the sauce. And we're gonna be slicing both. I have a little guy that prefers more of uh, green eating, so that's why I made this. And now it's time to shred our beef. Depending on the cut of beef that you have, some of them are gonna be a little bit tough to, uh, to shred. I'm gonna dip it into the sauce for you, and I'm gonna need somebody very special to say, uh, and her name is my beautiful sister, Cloud. Thank you so much. And for your tofu, you just wanna do a thin slice, just like that. 
Isn't that beautiful? You see that? Those layers of colors? Beautiful and delicious. Yeah. So if you're fully vegan, all you have to do for this one is change the chicken bouillon to a veggie bouillon. Or you can use salt. The spices are absolutely wonderful. I'm gonna need a super veggie friend to say, uh... Place your burner on a medium heat and drizzle a little bit of oil. My favorite, Sophia. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the dozen that you, you made me two dozens. Thank you. Think, you. you think I'm gonna fry that part. No, you, you're not. People are probably like, why doesn't she make her own? Well, guys, I can't control that my sister wakes up at five in the morning and is already baking and cooking and doing everything. I love feeding my family. That's my favorite thing to do. And when you're gonna make these, um, oven baked birria tacos you gotta load them up don't play okay add your quesito mm. i'm very grateful for you i'm thankful <laughs> and now we're just gonna fold it up right here just like that how we like it así bien rico van a comer rico ahora <laughs> Something about Colorado that just makes you want to be eating green on green. Green, on green, 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 green. All we see is green and we love it. Ooh. Got a little bit of that cheese crisp. That's ready. That's ready to go in our valley. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm going to continue with more, okay? He's selective with his proteins, but he loves cheese. <laughs> Kids. So he cute. really does. They make it super easy for parents, right? Yep, they never lie. Well, most of them don't. <laughs> Tell my kids, if you if you lie to me, I can't defend you when you need me. Hey, oh, let me put this one. Hold on a second. Oh, that one's going to be deliciously crisp. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. The Edward Scissorhands of tacos. And now we're ready for a taste test. All right, boys, give it a go. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna put a lime on mine. Maybe you're having the tofu one, right? Yeah, maybe it's having the tofu and Viola's having the beefy, beefy one. I already know Bebe likes it because he closed his eyes when he was eating. Mmm. <laughs> it's good. It might be the best cheese and taco I've ever tasted this year. Really? Oh, okay. This month. I'm gonna have to make. He said this month. month. <laughs> he corrected himself. <laughs> I don't know because there's are gonna be a lot of good tacos coming this way. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. These are the best the month. tacos I've ever had. I know on the last one I said it, it was potato tacos, but. It's but you stand corrected, babe. Stand <laughs> corrected. The tofu ones. <laughs> okay, it just keeps getting better and better. Thank you for your feedback. But your tacos, your potato tacos were bomb, baby. They were so good. Thank you. You did a great job on those. You did, honey. And your mamita did an awesome job here. Woo! I already had one off screen, guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was delicious. I need a napkin. <laughs> you need a napkin, sweetie? Go ahead and get one. Oh. Can you guys, is it spicy for you? No. No? No? Okay. You like the spices in there? Mm -hmm. And to top it off, we have some, some, we have some juice that our mommy. Juice, you wish. It's the way you look at Juice, I don't think so. Our water today consists of blended watermelon with uh, pineapple. I strained it and put it right back in the jar with no sugar, no nothing, and I squeezed a little bit of lemon. It tastes sugary. Does it? It does. The fruit was nice and ripe. I wanted to make this recipe easy for those of you that don't have the time to make the birria chili oil, so we incorporated all those seasonings and we even added vinegar to our recipe. And let me tell you, friends, don't sleep on it. She's right, don't sleep on it. This is delicious. And my godchild needs another taco, I think. Mm hmm. We should make it to the dinner table. <laughs> it's very important. You need to put lemon all over your meat and vegan tacos that my mom just made. Because it's very serious and it tastes very good. He, you are oh, serious about your tacos. Yeah. I have, my children are foodies and I have to impress them and I'm so happy that I did that today. Woo! I'm gonna have an easy weekend now. <laughs> wow! Oh, right. Thank you! Thank okay. you! Cheers, fellas! 
Cheers. 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 We. Oui. To your taste. taste. Some of that. I, I don't know. Something. I have to eat more. <laughs> you want to see something? What's happening? Guys, if you don't subscribe to my mom's channel, it'll make me very sad. What in the world? Oh, you're out of control. You guys, thank you. If you guys haven't subscribed, take the time to subscribe. <laughs> I can't with you, kid. He's going around. Tell them that you're kidding because they're going to think you're really quick. Darn it. I, wanna, I, just wanna, I just want you to hit one bill. That's it. I'm working on it. I'm making these impressive these impressive tacos for you so that we can get you guys. We're doing our best, but crying's not going to get us there. No. Hard work, dedication. <laughs> And consistency is gonna get us there, okay? <laughs> and rest. Okay. We need rest. As yep. Well. So you gotta let cup. Today we're gonna make you two infused agua frescas, and all you need is a few ingredients, and you probably have them at home. And if you don't, it's gonna be within your budget. Now Steph's gonna go over all the ingredients. Let's start off by prepping our cucumbers. You can leave the skin on or off. It's gonna be up to you. And this is just a habit for me to rub the ends. Um, and I. I believe, I believe I could be wrong, that it helps with the bitterness, but someone said it just depends on how your cucumbers are cultivated. If there's a lot of water, then they're a lot fresher and less bitter. Well, that's part of our culture, so who are you to end it now? You keep <laughs> rubbing it. <laughs> you can use a mandolin or a knife to cut your rounds. It's gonna be up to you. Don't make them too thick because you want them to stick to the outside of the container. If you're using a mandolin, be careful with your nuggies. And in order to infuse your water properly, you're gonna need one cucumber per container. You're also gonna need a lemon. If you're gonna be keeping this water for two days, use lemon. If you're gonna keep it for the same day, I would say just squeeze a little lemon instead of slicing your lime like you are because it tends to turn your water bitter because of the skin. All you're gonna need is about half a lemon per container. But of course, for those of you that wanna decorate it a little bit prettier, you might need to. And we're gonna do the same with our ginger. I know some of you don't have access to fresh ginger and guess what, that's okay. Just use a sprinkle of a powdered ginger, not too much, because it can get stuck in your throat. Uh, so just use a little sprinkle, a pinch. It's a sprinkle like this, Cloud. Look at my hand like this. Oh, that's too much for me. You wanna pour in a little bit of ice and you don't wanna fill it all the way with ice just yet because it's gonna be harder for you to insert your cucumber. I like going to celebrations and seeing these set up. Well, if that's what it takes to Or in the hotel breath. lobby. Oh, the hotel lobby, yes. Mm -hmm, the nice hotels. It really does make you feel like you're having a spa day hotel, or- Hotel, motel, holiday inn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking about those kind. No? <laughs> I don't know, you guys can get creative after you see this. We're staying healthy, okay? Don't start, you guys. <laughs> also in your home, you always have one of these ready. Yeah, you should have one of these ready. What I like about these is that if you have space in your refrigerator, if you have like the double doors, you can fit that. Even my single one, I can just fit a whole um, uh, container in there. Nice. I'm just gonna go around and around and place our cucumber rounds. And they don't have to be perfect because they'll end up moving after a period of time. You spin me round, round, baby. They're like us, they move, they move around a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Once you place that first layer of cucumber, you're gonna add a little bit more ice. Go ahead and add your lemon rounds. You have a few choices here. You can leave this as is overnight on your counter, and by the time you wake up, the ice is gonna melt, and you can add a little bit more water if you need to, or you can add some water and place it in your refrigerator and allow it to infuse for a minimum of about four hours. And we all know we have impatient children that see you making something so delicious and they want it now and guess what? You can give them some fresh water and then as they start drinking it, you can even add another gallon of water through this, it'll work out. This is all to infuse our water and get you guys to stop drinking soda. And what I mean by that is me. I'm trying, but Texas did me good. These tacos are good. And boom, this one is done, friends. You should be drinking this pretty much every single day if you don't wanna use lemon because they get pricey. You can just make this with cucumber and let me tell you, your kids are gonna be drinking water. Remember what I said, they need to be drinking about eight ounces of water when they first wake up and this is a perfect water for them to drink. 
Hola amigos, it's your tia Cloud. If you want to know where we get this container to put our agua frescas, let me know in the comments. I'm going to link it for you in the description area anyway. But if you need help finding ingredients or any products, just let me know. You'll see me down in the comment section as Cloud Views. Hope you guys have a beautiful day. Bye. And the same thing with our next container. We're just going to place the rounds of the cucumber. I always think the cucumber looks best at the bottom. But I'm excited to see what you guys are doing at home. So make sure to tag us on our social media, TikTok, Instagram. We're really never on Twitter and hardly ever on Facebook. Adding a little bit of ice is going to allow for whatever ingredient you're using to stay put. And next, you want to pick your favorite frozen fruit to add to your water. Today, I'm going to be using a mixed berry frozen fruit pack. And this has mango. I believe it has uh, strawberries blueberries and it's just perfect for this and this is a part where you just want to sprinkle in your lemons and that's just to preserve this a little bit longer if you're gonna be having it at the same day you don't have to you can just add like two wedges but if you're gonna preserve this for about two days you can do that so if you're gonna preserve this for two days go ahead and add some uh, lemon or lime in here remember what I said about the lime it can turn bitter so you might be better off squeezing the juice in here instead of placing them in rounds so go ahead and add your water. And already you want to drink this when it's pink. It's so pretty. <laughs> There's ice back there, so it's pouring. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. <laughs> so when the ice gets stuck back there, be careful because it does give you a heavy pour unless there's something stuck behind there. <laughs> now I'm going to need somebody very special to say, uh... And friends, make sure to save your cucumbers from your infused water. Put them in a little container. Put it in the refrigerator. I'm going to have a recipe for you guys that my kids absolutely love. And I'm trying to keep you guys healthy. You asked me for more healthier recipes, and that's exactly what I'm providing for you. So stay hydrated, and cheers. Yeah, that's good. I can already taste the ginger, and we just made that. Goodbye. Hello and welcome amigos. Today I'm going to show you how to make a delicious and healthy soup whether you're feeling sick, you've had surgery, or if it's cold outside. And it snowed for us today so I'm excited to make this soup. Amigos, what I have here are garbanzos verdes. These are green garbanzos. They are fresh and you can find these at your local Mexican market. Usually international markets might have it too. And all you want to do is you want to crack the little shell open Remove the fresh green garbanzo. And I want you to give that a good taste if you've never had them before. They're absolutely fresh and add such a unique flavor to your broth. Claude, you wanna try that? Sure. Ooh, ooh, I have a big one for you guys because mm. other ones are a little bit smaller, but they look just like that. It's like biting into a green bean almost. A fresh green bean. But better, it's not as sharp. It's very, very light. And it's not as strong as the garbanzos you get in a can or the ones that are uh, dehydrated. So what you wanna do is you wanna remove the shell and just start taking the garbanzos out. And this is a fun part for the kids to do. So since I have little ones watching, they're gonna get to work. <laughs> Let's start by bringing 20 cups of water to a boil. Once your water comes to a boil, you're gonna add 10 pounds of beef bone. Based on the way that my beef bone was sliced, I can see that I need to add a little bit more water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add four more cups of hot water. Continue to boil on a high heat for about 15 to 20 minutes, and that's going to bring all the impurities that we're going to be skimming shortly. When you see the impurities have rose to the top, you're going to go ahead and skim them out. If you guys need a good skimmer, Cloud will link it in the description area for you. And what I like to do is I like to skim all the impurities first, and then I put the lid on it allow it to boil for 10 more minutes and any remaining impurities will always rise right to the top. We want a nice, clean, beautiful broth just like you. Once you've removed your impurities, you're gonna add three tablespoons of salt. You're also gonna add one tablespoon of Mexican oregano. Why? Because I love the healing properties of Mexican oregano. Go ahead and add one whole onion and one garlic bulb. Place your burner on a medium heat, cover your pot, and continue to cook for another two hours. 
After about two hours, you're gonna notice that your bones are fall apart delicious, okay? So we're gonna remove everything. For those of you um, that wanna keep some of the fattiness in the meat, you can put it in the soup, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove everything. And it's really gonna be up to you because when you're sick, only you know yourself, right? And for me, I don't wanna chew too much. I want things that are soft and light, delicious, brothy. Once you remove the bones and all the excess from your soup, you're gonna go ahead and add your potatoes and you can go with about six or eight. It's really gonna be up to you. I know some of the kids just prefer the papa and the soup, so if you need to add 10, go ahead and do that. And next, we're gonna add our two cups of garbanzos. Place the lid over your pot and continue to boil on a medium heat for another 25 minutes. Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a seafood boil casserole with Mrs. Bila Smackalicious Sauce Mix. For this recipe you're going to need some king crab legs, one pound of cleaned and deveined shrimp, and we're going to need some dewy sausage, three cups of cooked rice, and we're going to need some sliced and cooked mini potatoes, two to three cups of your favorite melty cheese, one to two bags of corn, one pouch of your favorite Bee Loves Smackalicious sauce. For your Smackalicious sauce mix, you're gonna need two sticks of butter, half a thinly sliced onion, one minced garlic bulb, half a cup of pickled ginger, and one cup of chicken broth. One tablespoon of vinegar. Set your pan on a medium heat and add your butter. Add your onions. Add your garlic. Add your pickled ginger. Add your vinegar your chicken broth. Smells good. Smells good. <laughs> Add in your smackalicious sauce. Place your burner on a medium low heat. Combine all your ingredients and continue to cook until your veggies are translucent. While our sauce is cooking, we're gonna get started by cracking our crab legs. I'm gonna need somebody very special to say, uh. <laughs> mm. And are those pre-cooked? These are uh, thawed out from Costco. But any cooking extra that you need, it's gonna be done in the oven. To your casserole dish, you wanna add a few pieces of butter. And with your clean hands, add your rice. Add your corn. Your sausage. You help me on that side? Yeah. Okay. Add your potatoes. Add your shrimp. Add your king crab, and I'm just pulling it apart. And for those of you that don't have access to king crab right now, guess what? You can make this with imitation crab meat. Your favorite seafood will work perfectly in here. What's your favorite seafood? For me? Oh, I don't know, I'm a seafood junkie. Um, currently, oysters. Oh, mine too. I, <laughs> I really like oysters right what now. What about your survey? Crab. Nice. So you're excited for this casserole? Yeah. Bebe, how do you feel about your mom making so many casseroles? Good. You feel good about it? Yeah. Because <laughs> he can eat. <laughs> I think this might be your favorite one. I want to know the Views Club favorite seafood. The Views Club favorite seafood? Yep. Tell us in the comments, y'all, what's your favorite seafood? You're so sweet. How did I get so lucky? He wants to know. He wants to know. I hope that you guys share your information with him. And if there's something with seafood or crab that he should have, let us know. We're about to make some magic right now happen. 
You ready for it? Yeah. All right. And for the best part, go ahead and pour your Smack Delicious sauce all over. It smells so good. It smells so good? <laughs> so excited. We didn't have to wait too long for the delivery of the Smack Delicious sauce. It was quick. How long did you, Cloud got us our Smack Delicious sauce. How long did uh, it take for you to receive it, sis? Um, only two days. Two days? Ooh. And then they got it on Amazon Prime. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Something so beautiful like this deserves a song. Sing a song. What kind of song do you want, sis? Any kind <laughs> The one beneath my wing. <laughs> this smells and looks like something they'll serve at a restaurant. It really does. It smells so amazing. Bake at 380 degrees for 25 to 30 minutes. Make sure to put a parchment paper over your casserole or you can use a foil to prevent burning. And boom done, amigos. And I'm going to serve this casserole with the biscuit and you can't forget your lemon all right baby you ready for a taste yeah i'm gonna need somebody very special to say uh, uh you want to go on it first ooh, ooh, i'm nervous i'm nervous it's so good. <laughs> all right, this is all you. You can squeeze a little bit of lemon over that, sweetie. Thank you. You're all set. You got a smile and a thumbs up. <laughs> I did. Buen provecho. Thank you. You're welcome. You. It's hot. <laughs> it's really hot, baby. Careful. I'm going to pull through this cheese fest. This is one of those dishes that you hear the whole family, mmm, -hmm. <laughs> right? Mmm, that's so, so good. It's great. Wow, sister, you had a great a thumbs up and a smile. <laughs> it's so good I don't have any words. You don't? Wow. Yay! <laughs> Success. <laughs> I wonder if the secret ingredient was your magic little hands and the smackalicious sauce. What do you think? Smackalicious sauce. <laughs> do you think this is spicy? No. No? It's peppery, but in a good way. Mmm. Mm. Yeah, it's one of those dishes you can't really talk. It's so good. Mmm. Wow, baby. We did good, buddy. Great teamwork. <laughs> Thank you. Would you like some more? I had mine, remember? <laughs> She's still working on it. Uh-huh. I had a generous serving. Mm-hmm. So good. Ooh. I like the sweetness of the corn. Like, as you're working through the peppery stuff. Ooh. And the sauce went all the way through the potatoes. It right? did. It absorbed all the flavor. And the rice, Cloud said it while she was eating it. What'd you say? I was dancing and I said, this is a dirty rice. <laughs> <laughs> she did. It's so good. Those that have been watching me for a while know that I love like garlic, peppery rice. It's a comfort food for me. And this, this just brought it. I love it. Mm -mm -mm. We hit the danger zone right now. Nobody yeah. wants to talk. <laughs> I can't. <Okay. laughs> Look away, look away. How are you doing over there? Good. Babe, what's your favorite part? I'm curious. The rice. Because it has all the sauce and all the juices. Yep. We know why, because it's mixed with your corn. Yeah. <laughs> mm. As always, Cloud Bebe and I are wishing you the best. We absolutely adore you. We want to give a special shout out to Ms. B Loves for showing us how to enjoy our seafood. And on that one, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye! Bye.
Adiós.